The following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports, a division of Jefferson Pilot Financial. No one in the history of Southeastern Conference football has equaled the success of Alabama. Winners of 20 SEC and 12 national titles, the Crimson Tide won the first SEC regular season championship in 1933. And 59 years later, the first conference championship game. Tradition and excellence define Alabama football. You know, putting that jersey on means more than just uh, going out there and playing football. It means that you're, uh, you, you're a champion, you know, that you got more. You won the big one more than anybody else. But in the 90s, there's been a new sheriff in town. The Florida Gators have won five SEC titles the last seven years and crowned national champs in 1996. Steve Spurrier and the Gators have dominated SEC play this decade. We love being the um, being the Mark team, the team to be, you know, um, the team that everyone hates to play. Today, these two traditional powers meet in Bryant Denny Stadium, the home of the Crimson Tide, live from Tuscaloosa. It's Florida and Alabama next. Legendary players in the Southeastern Conference, Heisman Trophy winner Steve Spurrier and All-American Mike DeBose of Alabama now will compare wins as head coaches today as in our Bell South SEC Game of the Week, the Alabama Crimson Tide hosts Florida at the newly expanded Brian Denny Stadium. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Kessling along with Dave Rose. Should be a great afternoon of football. Glad you're with us today. Alabama coming off a very disappointing game at Arkansas. They have simplified the offense this week. That means get it to number 37. It certainly does, Bob. When you simplify, you go back to the running game. And Sean Alexander started off the year off strong, but Arkansas really shut them down. They put seven players in the box, and they took his game away. Look for Alabama to spread their offense a little bit more, but Florida's defense, they may be the best in the country, Bob. Indeed, they might be, and the offense isn't bad either. They've got two quarterbacks again. They're going to rotate. I know. That's really an interesting move. It goes against the unwritten rule that you don't rotate quarterbacks, but Steve Spurrier decided he's one of seven or eight teams that's done that and with incredible results. You looked at their combined stats, and to, together, they are as good as Tim Couch, and he leads the nation. So it's Alabama going up against Florida. The last four years they've met, it has been for the SEC Championship. Back with the opening kickoff from Brian Denny Stadium in just a moment. Today's Bell South SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications company of the SEC. By Nations Bank. Nations Bank lends more money to small businesses than any bank in America. By the all-new BMW 3 Series. Everything your car does well, it does brilliantly. By Nationwide Insurance. For insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs, call a Nationwide Insurance agent today and get Nationwide on your side. And by Dodge, the truck stop of the New South. The New Dodge. On campus, the Bryant Museum. It's a stop all football fans should make if they're traveling through Alabama. You relive the history of Bear Bryant, SEC football, and the great moments in Alabama, which has made this tradition so great inside the newly expanded Brian Denny Stadium, hoping that tradition helps them today beat the team of the decade in the SEC, the Florida Gators. Let's go downstairs to the other member of our broadcast crew, David Logan. All right, Bob, thank you very much. In big games like this, you have to rely on impact players to help you to get the job done. Unfortunately for Alabama, they are going to suffer someone in the passing game. That's because Shamari Buchanan, the brilliant wide receiver that was injured in the preseason with a collarbone injury, will not come back today. It was believed that maybe he could. Now, talking to the medical staff, they're indicating that he may be back next week at the earliest. Also, Michael Vaughn, the other receiver, has been suspended because of violation of team rules. He will return next week. That means that what they're going to have to do is run the football more. That's a tough, tough situation because of what Florida has in the presence of Javon Curse. He is the freak. That's the nickname for him. Six foot three, 250 pounds, can get the job done. He's got five other nicknames that we will talk about this afternoon. So we'll definitely keep our eyes on Javon. By the way, Bob, Dave, 
What kind of nicknames did you guys have that we can use on the air? Slow and tired is what I was. Well, I'll, I'll share a couple of mine later. <laughs> so Alabama will play defense first. Mark Wisniewski will kick it off, and Florida will get it first. John Cavell and Robert Gillespie, deep. One of the great traditional rivalries in SEC football. But most of the times when they play, money's at stake. Today, Alabama trying to spread the upset against the Gators, and we're underway from Tuscaloosa. Cavell takes it deep. He breaks a couple of tackles and fights his way out to the 20. And so Florida will get it first. What quarterback will come out to start things? It's going to be Jesse Palmer. You see his stats. The five interceptions are a concern, but still 12 touchdowns. And he's hit on 61% of his passes, the sophomore out of Canada. And there's Doug Johnson. He'll get his turn. He's in stands right by Steve Spurrier. Terry Jackson, the standing tailback for the Gators. Travis McGriff, second down 10 for Florida. Here's a look at our nation's bank small business starting lineup for Florida. Well, it's a good set of backs and wide receivers. Travis McGriff is their deep threat, Bob. 23 catches, 21 yards per carry. The line, it's anchored by Zach Piller. A lot of comparisons with him to Mo Collins, the first round draft choice. I personally think he's better. So no rotation of the quarterbacks as Palmer stays in for his second straight play. There's a late flag. Perry Jackson, the ball carrier. And it was in the Eight field of play, so it was not play. where Jackson was and run out of bounds. I think it's it might be Travis play. McGriff with a hold. If it is, and that's the call, a holding call. Travis McGriff had great position on the outside back on Bryant, and I think he just held on to him too late. Esther Sizemore is our referee today. They'll mark it from the point of the foul. And so that'll take the first down away. On the offense, the spot foul will be 10 yards, and the spot still second down. And Bob, Travis McGriff is number three. Watch him down and left of your screen right there. That may be, see right there is what they call a hold, and it's against number 25, Fernando Bryant. Boy, that negates a big run. Can't hold on to the jersey, though, no. especially when the official, two of them were standing right in front of him. So Steve Spurrier's team pushed back. And so it'll be second down. As you see, both of these teams have been penalty prone. Nothing really new for Florida today, but they seem to overcome penalties. Well, the penalties don't hurt them. They just seem, like you say, they seem to overcome them. So Palmer stays in on this first series and the throw. On second down and way overshoots his man. Daryl Jackson was out there. And that ball sailed on him a bit. This is a good defensive unit by Alabama. Moorhead is just a freshman out there, but he had a great game against Vanderbilt. Three sacks and a fumble recovery. Travis Carroll, real concerns about his shoulder. We'll watch that closely. In the secondary, led by Fernando Bryant, he's one of the best one-on-ones. They may try to match him up with McGriff. And Bob there, of course, is the coach's booth of Alabama. So now, what big yeah. series for Alabama, Bob. This is a huge emotional turnover to hold Florida and be able to come out and get that ball. They'll get a great field position. 
And now Alabama has to take a timeout. Didn't have enough players on the field, or the alignment wasn't what Mike DeBose wanted, so they will call call a timeout. But Davis is exactly what Alabama wanted. A good play and good stop by their defense. We are scoreless. Florida punted away. When we come back, first the word from Red Roof Inn. So a holding penalty towards Florida's first drive. Now they've got to punt it away. David Wazalewski from Tampa, freshman, steps in. Marvin Richard back for Alabama, standing in his 45-yard line. Alabama's coming. Low driving spiral. Richard will have to let it bounce, and he gets a good Florida roll down to the 40-yard line. But still, Alabama will have great field position on their first possession. Now look at our nation's bank starting offense for Alabama. Well, the backs and wide receivers are good. They're going to miss Vaughn. But if Sean Alexander's going to run well, Dustin McClintock, the fullback's got to play in there well. And this, this deep offensive line is anchored by Will Cuthbert. He's just a sophomore, but he's played well. They need to have a good football game out of him. He's against Beauchamp. John David Phillips. Rough afternoon last week against Arkansas. 9 of 21, only 48 yards. The longest pass they completed, 8 yards last week. That's incredible. <laughs> Shovel pass, nothing there. That's not a fumble. That's an incomplete pass. Florida came up with it. Javon Kirst thought he had a fumble, but that's the old Utah pass, and Alexander couldn't hold it. Safe play, day for the first yeah, it really was. The underneath little little kind of toss along the line. You'll see it. Quarterback drops back, and it throws the ball right in there. And you can see that Florida just comes off the ball and gets such great penetration, Bob. That's a tough play. You've got to delay it a little bit more. You see right here, look at the penetration that Florida has. Boom, you see Kurse get right back into the football thinking it was a fumble. Hey, if I had Kurse coming on me, I'd get rid of it, too. <laughs> yes, you would. Second down. Alexander following his blockers and picks up about five right up the middle. Johnny Rutledge able to make the stop. And there you see the Gators' defense. Well, it's anchored by Ed Schuster in the middle. He's solid. He plays the line well. But interestingly, no sacks. The defensive linebackers, they're great. All three Butkus nominees anchored by Johnny Rutledge, the number one tackler in the secondary. Tony George got injured in that Tennessee game. It's the first game that he's back. They need a big game out of him. Alabama had nine series, three plays and outs. And now they got a third down here. Phillips. There's Curse again, number 42, and Alabama nothing on their first possession as well. Well, it wasn't one person that swamped them, it was three. Curse, you're going to see Cohen's in there and another player in there. Three of them just all over top of them. Boom, that's quite a pile. Fourth down, 11 yards to go. Again, look at this, just caving down. So it's a quick in pass right there, it's blocked. In other words, the pass route is taken away and it just kind of collapses on top of them. 55 is Cohen's and 42 is Curse. Daniel Pope now in the punt for Alabama. He's had a 43-yard average, but he's had to punt the ball 20 times this year. Now that's a concern for Alabama. Good snap. Good kick. And Travis McGriff going to take a fair catch in his 23-yard line. That's where Florida will get it for the second time. Well, Dave Alabama couldn't do much against that Florida front. Well, they've got to have they've got to have those secure plays where they can start picking up first downs. You can't trade field position with Florida; they're too explosive. We see the quarterback rotation that we talked about with Doug Johnson. Those are great stats, Bob. Yeah, no interceptions either. He had 12 of them last season. So Spurrier not rotating the quarterbacks every play, at least now every series, as Johnson gets his turn. And he'll throw it on first down. He'll throw it long. was run down by Hunter, but he's to the 10-yard line of Alabama. Johnson, what an arm he's got. Oh, boy. This ball carried about 45 yards in the air, and there was no loss on it. It was just a straight arrow. It's a straight pattern by McGriff, just a takeoff. But look at the trajectory of this. Good play right there. Look at the line. A lot of time. Boom, and he just throws that. He's got the stronger of the two arms between the quarterbacks. Look at that. Right on target. McGriff had him beaten on that fly pattern. 67 yards on the pitch and catch, and now the Gators have a first and goal. And they'll try Terry Jackson. Picks his way for a couple, stays on his feet down to the seven-yard line. Terry Jackson, 
Cornelius Griffin in there to make the play for Alabama, along with Travis Carroll. Carroll trying to go today, but a very sh sore shoulder, Dave, and that really puts a pressure and a problem, creates a problem in the Alabama coaching staff. It certainly does. There you see the possessions inside the 20-yard line, Bob. That's called the red zone. Look at that, 75% scoring. And they've got, they scored touchdowns, too. Yeah, exactly. Second and goal for Florida. Second possession of scoreless game here in the first. Johnson zips it too hard. Let his man just a little bit. Travis McGriff, the senior, couldn't get there. Bob, one of the interesting things that Mike DuBose, is, we look at Steve Spurrier, but Mike DuBose asked his team, he said, don't quit on it. Don't get tired and hang it up early. They felt that this team let down a little bit in the second half. But watch the hit that gets right here on the tail end right there. That's a little bit late. Canary Knight. Yeah, just a little bit later. Makes the penetration. Well, you want to hit these guys. The quarterbacks, if you can get to them. They don't take sacks that often. Now Johnson has to hurry as the play clock is winding down. Big down here. No backs in the backfield. It's definitely a pass. Johnson, quick step. Big pattern. Here by Hanson is the 10th receiver. That was Terry Jackson out of the backfield. And Tony Dixon on defense for Alabama. This is one of those patterns where the back looks, the receiver looks back to the quarterback, and the defensive back has to play the eyes of the receiver. It's tossed up, and you can see it's a well-thrown ball right off the fingertips. The receiver really in a tough position that time, because his back is to the quarterback. It'll be a 24-yard field goal attempt now for Jeff Chandler. He's taken over now for Collins Cooper. Spurrier doesn't like to kick field goals, but he'll take it right here as Florida jumps in front. But good news for Alabama, they was first in goal, and they hold the Gators to a field goal. We'll be back to Tuscaloosa, but first a word from your local SEC stations. Cheers. Day, threat of rain in the Alabama area, but none here in Tuscaloosa right now. As the Alabama fans now try and see if the tide can counter the field goal by Florida. Chandler to kick it off. Marvin Richard and Freddie Millens back deep for Alabama. Kick is into the wind and it's high and long. And Richard will down it in the end zone. Alabama will get it on the 20, down 3-0. Out uh, there, of course, you see Neil Calloway right there, second in your screen. This is the coach's box right here. Quite a nice relationship between Dyke, Mike DeBose and uh, Neil Calloway. They were roommates, of course, here at Alabama. And they've stayed really good friends. The coaching careers have taken them different routes. Of course, Calloway spent some time at Auburn. Now he's here at Alabama trying to direct John David Phillips in this tight attack. They look like Florida here, no running backs. Did Phillips get it back? They're going to try and take it out. He did not, and Florida comes up with it. Exactly what Mike DeBose did not want. Easy opportunities for Florida, and Johnny Rutland knocked it loose, and Richie McGrew fell on it. Crucial turnover for Alabama. Watch 58. You'll see Rutledge come right through the middle. It's a little bit of a twist in the middle there. Rutledge, number 58, the linebacker, comes inside around the tackle, McGrew, and just has a clear shot at him. That's not what you wanted here, Mike DeBose. But I think one time, once Florida saw there was no back there, they did that little stunt, little twist in the middle. Got great pressure on John David Phillips, and the results are Florida back in scoring distance. They did not take care of the football that time. Let's see if the Gators go right for the jugular on first down. No backs in the backfield. And Jesse Palmer going to throw it to the end zone and the other Tootsie fan. Darrell Jackson was making the cut to the end zone. The pass was too high. Sigler was on the defense for Alabama. Boy, Bob, I'll tell you, Palmer took a shot that time. He may be coming to the sideline to take a deep breath. He really got hit from the backside. So now Doug Johnson comes on to replace him on second down. Florida needs to get to the two-yard line for a first down, but looks like they're gunning for the end zone here, leading 3-0. Well, big series for Alabama. They need they need to hold them to a field goal try. Johnson, pressure, clock, throws it into the end zone and can't get there. Good defense that time. Marcus Spencer making sure that Kareem can't get to the end zone. 
and didn't it for him. They hear a little bit of booze from the Florida fans. They wanted pass interference, but the ball was thrown out of bounds. It was one of those uncatchable balls. Here comes Palmer back in with the play. Kendall Moorhead was the guy who was able to make the penetration and put the pressure on. And you see that Alabama, they make a turnover. The other teams have been able to cash in on it. Florida trying to do so here. Big down for Alabama's defense. Trying to keep the Gators out of the end zone again. Palmer, fake Didn't put enough loft on that one. Gary ripped him running down. Interesting. They're going to break the Florida record for field goals today because this is going to be their second field goal try. But that was a huge series for Alabama. To hold them to a field goal keeps them one touchdown from being back in this football game. So that was a big series, Bob. But you're right. No loft on the ball. Just kind of threw it on an angle straight on out there. 29-yard attempt. Billy Young to hold it. Chandler to try and get his second field goal of the day. Jumping everywhere. See if somebody flinched in that Florida offensive line. Well, it's fourth down and 10, so it wouldn't make much of a difference if it is against Alabama. But I think the uh, Alabama players were po pointing over there, I think, in Cooper Carlisle's area. But it's going to go against Alabama. They jumped into the neutral zone and drew Florida offsides. Field goal unit, though, stays on for the Gators. Offsides on the defense. The to this penalty. Still fourth down. What I thought for a minute there, Steve Spurrier might go for the touchdown. You know, he's done that before. Mike DuBose is happy just holding Florida to this field goal try. And that moves it up a bit. It'll be a 24-yard attempt now for Chandler, who hit one earlier in the game. And the kick is up and good. So a couple of 24-yard field goals for Jeff Chandler. And Florida leads it 6 to nothing. but Dave Alabama thankful it's not 14 nothing. Absolutely. And Florida not used to scoring field goals. And Alabama has got to come back and have a good series right now. They really need to take pressure off their defense. Their defense has responded. The Florida scoring drive. SEC football is brought to you in part by Red Roof Inns, where you'll find nice people and an honest value. For reservations at any Red Roof Inn, call 1-800-THE-ROOF or your local travel agent. You see Paul Bear Bryant. They were in the offices yesterday, Mike DeBose and the coaching staff. Can't hardly turn without seeing a picture of the Bears. Every, every coach's office that we went to, we went to Neil Calloway's, went to, you know, just all the way down the hallway, everyone has the Bears' influence in their office. You know, we, we mentioned the fact that they have this newly expanded stadium and a, and a brand new video screen here. And right before kickoff, they play a video with Coach Bryant, some of the pictures of those championship teams, and it gives you goosebumps. Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. And electric has uh, the yeah, they've done an outstanding job of remodeling this stadium and expanding it to see the, uh, the old upper deck. That uh, was on the press box side, and of course, the new upper deck on the other side. Over 80,000 today jamming this place. Hoping that Alabama can pull the upset. They've dodged a couple of bullets, but they still trail 6-0. 10-17 to go first quarter. Richard's going to take a deep and going to stay right there. Dave, Alabama's got to do something offensively, and they've got to take care of the football. Interesting this week that Mike DeVos said that John David Phillips, he's a veteran, a senior, but he can't make freshman mistakes. If you're going to make mistakes, you might as well go with the young quarterback. Well, what you do in this situation is what Mike DeVos is trying to do is simplify it a little bit. Look at these, the total yards. Alabama virtually not moving the ball at all. Big series here. Not so much that they drive down and get a touchdown, but just that they get some first downs and get the just kind of the pressure off them. Of course, field position is going to problem for Alabama. They've been backed up. Alexander trying to kick it outside, and look at those Gators just swarm to you. Dave, that's the thing about Florida. It's the speed. Not oh. necessarily the size, it's the speed up. You're exactly right. They have size with Chester and McGrew in the middle. They're those 290-pound defensive tackles. But they run so well to the ball. you got Bochamp and Cohens. Then you talk about the three backs, uh, the three linebackers in Rutledge, Peterson, and Kirsten. You've got team speed, Bob. That's incredible. Those they, linebackers hit you like a sledgehammer. Yeah, they, they just don't get knocked down. They don't. If they get knocked down, they're up so fast it doesn't look like they've been knocked down. Alabama trying to spread them out a little bit. Second down and long. Set up the screen, but it's deflected in the middle. 
As Ed Chester got a hand up and deflected the pass. I thought that might have been Hurst. Oh, I think you're right. Yes. Yeah. Hurst was on this blitz, and what happened was it was going to be a screen right over top of the middle. What you're trying to do is drop back, drop back, and you just dump it over the middle, and you see Curse's hands get up here right there. See Curse right there? Boy, Alabama had that play set up. If McClintock had caught that, look right there, you'll see it just tip off. Look, see where McClintock is? If he catches that football and turns around, he's got at least 8 to 10 yards. The freak makes a big play. For the Gators, and Alabama trying to set up some motions. Freddie Millens now will be in the guy in motion to the top of the screen. And John David Phillips to throw a third down. couldn't get the ball to win. Well, there's no way Mike Peterson should make this play. He runs all the way from the weak side, all the way across the field, and breaks down the quarterback. You've got to get rid of it. I don't care if they're not open. Right in here, you have got to get rid of it. See Peterson coming from the back side for 29, and Curse right there also. Curse is the one that comes down with the tackle. He already has two sacks already today. Daniel Pope now in the punt again, second time today. That's a great kick. Wow. Seven yard punt Adam by Fox. Daniel Pope, Chase but the Gators will be backed up on that. There's a flag on the play. Yeah, that may be a clip against Chad McLeahy. McGee locking in the back. Daniel Pope. Daniel Pope, the leading punter in the SEC, and didn't hurt his statistics on that one. I thought he was kicking that into the wind, but uh, boy, he got it. He got us some leg into that thing. Second big penalty now for Florida in the game. Now we may see this block right in here, right there. That's the block in the back. That's 34 McGeehee. Now you just try to find that wall of blockers. I think what happens is illegal block in the back on the return team. We penalize half the control line. First down. Doug Johnson now comes on for the Gators this time. Florida leads it six to nothing. But they've had two great scoring opportunities and haven't been able to cash in except field goal. Well, this is a big series now for the defense. They've answered the call twice. If they can get a turnover or make Florida punt from this position, they'll get their offense position on the field, get a good field position. Florida, they just want to drive the football. They want to get a first down. Barry Jackson is pushed back by the middle of that Alabama line. Oh, that's Gillespie in there, number 20, the 5'9 freshman. He's out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And Travis Carroll inside to shore up the middle for Alabama. Also in Bob, the the for defense Alabama. is keeping this crowd in the football game. They actually could be down 14 to nothing, but their defense has kept this crowd in. And this crowd could be a huge factor. A lot of noise down that end zone. Bob, as soon as you see out patterns like that all being high, you start to question whether this is a flat field, whether that has any bearing on it. Now, these quarterbacks are outstanding quarterbacks, but we've had seven or eight pass patterns thrown over top of the head on the sideline patterns. It is a flat field, by the way. And they're 0 for 3 now, the Gators are, in third down conversions. Big, big down here for both teams. Florida wants to get out of there deep in their own position. Travis McGriff, and that'll be a first down. Complete. Comes down and runs the deep hook and right in front of Kelvin Sigler, Sigler and, and gets the first down. Yard line. Tell you what, he can make the 14 yard game. He certainly can. This is just going to be a curl pattern inside. Down just one. curl and be big. Now slide to the inside, find the open seam. And that's one of those players. Travis McGriff is one of those players that Doug Johnson loves to go to. But look at the time Johnson has right here. Alabama didn't quite get the rush that they had gotten on the first two series. Johnson like that, and so do the Gators, as it's first down. Johnson, quickly, going long. And the receiver is bumped. They 
say it's enough. There's the flag. The back judge was yeah, right there and didn't throw it. The field judge came in and threw it. Fernando Bryant leading his case. But the receiver, Travis Taylor, was bracketed and bumped. And it'll cost Alabama. Well, what's interesting is it's a good line surge up the middle. They're going to get a good push in there. Kelvis White, number 67, levels Johnson right there. Downfield, that was interesting. Defensive pass interference. The 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And Bob, what was interesting about that pass defense, and you hear the reaction of the crowd, is it was incidental contact where they just kind of ran together. It wasn't like first down you know, he drug him down or, or gave a hand on him or pushed him or anything like that. But the Gators get a first down out of it. Going for the Johnson. This trip coming out from center. I think the center may have stepped on his foot, or the guard. Let's see again right there. Yeah, the center steps on his foot as he pushes off. Look at Johnson, still hands it off. Boy, that could have been a fumble easily. Well, he was already down when he hit though. So, so Zaxon Delos steps on Johnson's foot, and that's a break for Alabama. Pushes the Gators back. Will be second down, 13. Florida leading 6 0. Midway first quarter. Blitz. And he throws it away. He threw it behind the intended receiver, Terry Jackson, just to get rid of it. But Jackson was in the area. Kevin Sigler was the closest one to the ball. I'll tell you, Sigler looked up. This ball, if it doesn't bounce in front of Sigler, watch number 20 out to the right of your screen. Once he throws the ball right there, look at Sigler. He's right there saying, oh my goodness, it was right there in my hands. I believe Alabama's done a nice job with their blitzes. When they've come, the timing of them, and they've uh, really been pretty successful. What they're doing, Bob, is they're watching to see when the quarterback makes a check. When he makes a check, it's almost as if they know where to come with the pressure, and they're blowing up those two, the two safeties up inside to get pressure. Third and long. They just get it off. And Johnson throws it. It's complete to Kareem. But there's a flag down. There I are think flags he was. On the play. He didn't get it off in time. It didn't look like. I don't know if that, I was wondering if the clock had run out of time. Again, quarterbacks have got to be conscious of that. They've got to look up at that clock in the end zone. Well, there are a couple of flags down. Well, the one is along the line of scrimmage. Not quite the start that Steve Spurrier. Delay game on the offense, sitting the 25 second count. Still third down. You mentioned the fact that Astor Sizemore is the referee today. And you see the other officials working today's game between Alabama and the Florida Gators here. Third down. South SEC game of the week. Bob Kessley, Dave Rowe, and David Logan are on the sidelines on this warm afternoon in Tuscaloosa. And the Tide now trying to put heat on Doug Johnson. Third down and 19 to go. Now, if you come with a blitz or you just try to get pressure from your front line, he's got time. And he throws the ball into the Alabama bench. He overshot Travis Trailer. Taylor out there had no shot at that one, and Alabama's defense comes up big again. Everything to the out patterns has been over the, over the receiver's head. They'll have to make an adjustment to that. But listen to the crowd still in this football game. They know they're they're just kind of hanging, and that's what they kind of thought. They said, if we can hang with Florida, then we have a chance. Florida, fantastic offense, moves the football up and down the field. The defense has got it together today for Alabama. I wonder if the offense does. We'll see you in a moment. Wazalewski and again the punt for the Gators. Arvin Richard standing back in his own 27-yard line. This punt into the wind. The 38-yard line, good coverage as Teddy Sims, a linebacker on the punt team, makes the stop. And so Alabama gets its best field goal, field position of the game. Down 6-0 here in Tuscaloosa. Six to nothing Gators. Couple of field goals here in the first, and Alabama has the ball now trying to counter and take the lead, but their offense has not done much so far against this talented Gator defense. 
And they make a change at quarterback. You see where Alabama's average start time of 26 on the start, uh, starting the yard line. And Andrew Sound now the quarterback. Out pass complete. That is man, Calvin Hall. So right away, the change at quarterback pays dividends. Well, that's what you want to do to get this team juiced up a little bit. That's what Mike DuBose told us. He said, hey, he said, if John David Phillips doesn't start off strong, I'm not afraid to go with Andrew Zhao. See Zhao's numbers and John David Phillips should move the team and they'll see if Zhao can do it. Second down three. A lot of movement on the offense. Sometimes this will really give you a spark. He tried to get rid of it, but he felt pressure as, again, Laquan Manuel was able to get in there for Florida. Well, they really like Sal's mobility back there. He's got a little bit quicker feet, can slide around, and he's not afraid of pressure. That time he had Florida right in his face. Just a freshman, this is a big opportunity for him. The Alabama coaches are, this is a big decision, just to get a spark on their offense. Well, they got... Good yardage on first down. Second down, of course, the incomplete. Now they need three on first down. You see, they haven't converted yet today. Zach, time this time. Get it to Sean, Sean Alexander. Alexander. Alexander, not much there. Johnny Rutledge. And Ron Stay tuned at halftime for our Bell South. You call the play feature. Oh, yeah, a look man. at a big call from SEC games past. Alexander has scored Alabama's last nine rushing touchdowns, eight this season. The only player to rush for a touchdown this year for Alabama. Phillips was 0 for 2. Sal, since he's coming this series, 2 of 3 throwing. Trying to get up there with one hand and just couldn't bring it down. Oh, boy, he had Calvin Hall across the middle on the scene. And Calvin Hall knows if this ball was just an inch lower, he's going to come down with that huge play. Right over the middle, right here, inside. Bang, right there. Throw the ball to him now. Look at that. Nobody in place. Nobody in front of him. That was going to be a huge play. Good read, though, by Andrew Sal. Alabama is into Florida territory now. On third down, though. Another blitz. Now Sal. He's got some wheels. Did he get a first down? He's close. And that's another dimension he brings to the offense, Dave. Back to the eye now on first down as Andrew Zhao shows some of that athletic ability. And the handoff to Alexander breaks a couple tackles. Plows deeper into out the Florida territory. Lost his shoe on the way. Well, this is a huge series for Alabama because all of a sudden, your offense is moving the ball. You keep your defensive excitement up because the defense has responded well. For Florida, they're kind of caught a little bit by surprise. There's the coach's box as they ponder what goes. You never see any emotion from these coaches. They just sit back there and just kind of keep on just hoping and wishing and praying. But Florida really needs to, to answer right here. They need to put a stop on this Alabama threat, take this crowd out of the game. His receiver fell down. Zal just throws it over the middle. Quincy Jackson, I think he short hopped it, but it was receiver on the right side. I think the guy he was going to go to, Eric Locke, when he made his break, fell down. Well, what happened? What happened on Zal on this play is watch. He's going to throw off his back foot. See where he's backing up, and the ball just dies going out there. Good try there, but you're right. Came off his primary receiver. Looked at that crossing pattern. For him, it's a shame he didn't have that foot forward where he could drive it in. Big down right here. I think almost, if I'm Mike DeBose, 
I might try twice to pick up this yardage. Balls and lock in the slot. And that's Quincy Jackson. Brady Jackson. Close, and but I don't think he got there for the first down. He needed to get right to the 21 yard line. Let's see where they spot him. Uh, Mike, for Mike DeBose, it's do you go for a field goal and try to pick up one of the two or three points, or do you go for the touchdown? He's saying, hey, I want to stay with these Gators. I'm going to try to kick this field goal. Down down to the 23 yard line. But they decide, take the points when you can get them. Well, especially for your Ryan offense, because your offense has responded well in the to the football. You don't want to bring them off the field without having any success or putting any points on the board. Lugner kicks the 55-yard field goal last week against Arkansas. Oh, he made it! Oh, wow! Oh, 40 yards on that one line drive. No style points, but he gets three out of them. Wow, that thing couldn't have cleared the goal post by a foot. That was incredible. This ball, it barely clears. Look out, it doesn't even go high at the stadium. You guys just standing right behind there and just caught it. Well, that gets this Alabama crowd back into it again. Six to three is our score as Alabama gets on the board with 2.18 to go in the first quarter. Next Saturday, we've got another good one for you. Auburn and Mississippi State, our Bell South SEC game of the week. Ben Leard averaging 208 yards passing, has some great targets in Kirsten Bailey and Clifton Robinson. Tiger defense will need a way to stop that great running attack of Mississippi State. Should be a good one next week. Hope you'll be with us for Auburn and Mississippi State, 12.30 East at 11.30 Central Time. Find out more about the game by getting us on the internet at jbsports.com. 6-3. As Alabama to kick it away again. Wisniewski will boot it away to the, the Gators. In, as Bell and Gillespie stand deep for Florida. And Bob, you know as well as I do, it's a game of emotion. That emotion should help Alabama play this football game. Short kick, Gillespie at his 15. Looks for running room. He'll return that time out across the 30. Now that's where the Gators will take the over. Over. Let's go downstairs now to David Logan. Yeah, we've been seeing uh, Florida go with this quarterback rotation, this platooning system all season long. And really, there's no it's method to Steve Sprayer's madness. He kind of does it according to how he feels. If one quarterback comes out and throws 50 yards, that doesn't mean he's going to stay in the game if it's a 50-yard strike. Right now, we're seeing Jesse Palmer, though, because Doug Johnson has sputtered. He did have a good pass early in the first quarter, but failed to get it in the end zone. So now it's up to Jesse Palmer. Palmer. For four. Out of the shoot. And now he takes over the offense as the Gators have their lead cut to three, six three. There's an awful on the line. Taking a lot of time to come. Seven seconds, now six, five, and they get the playoff. Gators over some people, and the red shirts come up and push him back. Terry Jackson walking. Terry Jackson as Cornelius Griffin has a hole along with Canary Knight. Boy, and I watched Sigler that time, the safety, number 20. I mean, he came Very in nice. there and just stuck. You talk about sticking. Watch 20 number 20 come in on this play. He reads it. He's the strong safety. Right in here, he's going to come. Bang, that's him. Loses his helmet. Boy, he's a tough little leg back there at about six foot, about 190 pounds. You see his terrific numbers this year. At 13 tackles against Arkansas, nine against Vanderbilt, and an interception. He's been an all-star performer for Alabama. Doug Johnson now the quarterback. Over the middle, got his man, his fullback, Rod Frazier. And Frazier gets it out to the 45-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a first down as Tony Dixon jumps up from strong safety to make the play. Boy, that's what Florida does so well. Their wideouts are covered. Come and find one of those little backs coming out of the backfield. He finds Frazier, uh, just a little curl pattern. And Johnson and Palmer both read so well, Bob. They read where the coverage is. Of course, they're just an arm of the quarterback, Coach, and that's Steve Spurrier. He's the main man out there directing this offense. One minute to go. First quarter, a 6-3 game. Jackson breaks it. Looking for a block and runs it down to the 32-yard line. Terry Jackson, the senior out of Gainesville. He's the...
student body vice president, a leader in the classroom, and at Florida and on the football field. Boy, just a huge block right there. Look at this turnout right there. That's Walker inside. That's an excellent block inside by Carlisle, Cooper Carlisle. I mean, they just opened up a hole there. Good lead block in there by Frazier. Pick up the backer. That's just like you draw it on the chalkboard. Remember, Florida is 54 and 1 under Spurrier when they rush for over 100 yards. Johnson to the end zone, looking for Taylor. And no flag out there, so bumping Kelp Bailey on the coverage. And the pass was incomplete, intended for Travis Taylor. Well, you know, that was good coverage by Bailey. He was really beaten on the play. Watch Bailey, he's going to keep inside position on the receiver see right here he's playing the receiver's eyes he doesn't he can't look back at the ball he's just playing the receiver there's no face guarding in college so he's just playing the receiver trying to keep that inside position and when you see that receiver look back for the football with those big wide eyes bailey just got in between it looked like taylor might have had old bailey's face mask but he got away with it second down johnson the blitz coming gets rid of it to McGriff, a reliable and Travis McGriff is rolled out of bounds. That'll be short of a first down. Comes from the great football family. His dad, of course, an All-American wide receiver at Florida back in 74. Also part of the Gator Radio Network for yeah. many years. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great story to watch your son follow on into your footsteps. Five seconds, four, three. Let's see if Florida is going to let him run out, and that will be it. In the first quarter. So Alabama's defense keeps the Gators out of the end zone, but Florida still leads it 6-3 to three on a couple of field goals from and Jeff Chandler. The first quarter. Second quarter coming up from Tuscaloosa, the Gators in the front. Alabama leads the all-time series against the Gators, 18 wins to 10, four of the six games. The last six have been in the SEC championship game. down. Kerry Jackson near the 20-yard line. Kelvin Sigler. You know, when you start thinking about defense, you get down inside and this more down territory, and, and you start conceding things, and it's almost like Alabama said, okay, we know he's going to run We know he's a great back. We know he can make that first down. We're not going to give him the home run strike. We're going to try to pull him up short again and maybe hold him to another field goal on this series. It out. run out of bounds after a pickup of just over five yards. Well, you know what I like about Travis McGriff? You're going to catch this ball, fans. This is right in your hands. But look at that. He catches it clean. Reminds me of the great receivers that I've seen over the years. They don't bobble the ball. They don't They don't catch it against their body. Keep those hands out. Look that football in. He's got a great pocket. He's an outstanding wide receiver. He's got three touchdown catches on the year. Now he planks out wide to the near side as Travis McGill. On second down, Terry Jackson gets it to the 11 yard line. That's close to a first down. Bob, did you see what he did that time? I thought he almost thought about handing it back to the quarterback. The because when Doug Johnson Smith. takes this football and rolls out, watch what he does. He throws to him right there. It looks like he almost puts the ball back to Johnson. Runs back on the, sli on the slide on the angle there. Kendall Moorhead was back in the backfield, didn't know which way to go. On <laughs> exactly. Here's Jackson, what a great performer he's been for this game of football team. Doug Johnson gets a big line surge behind Deke Story. And Cooper Carlisle right there in the middle, and he gets the first down. Here's a look at our Duckhead first quarter stats. First down floor. And Bob, the one thing that jumps out at you is that one turnover. That's three points on that turnover, but really, when you start looking at this offense, four yards rushing, 24 yards passing, that's not going to get it, but they got a little bit of a spurt there when Sal came in and gave them, gave, got them down the field. Alabama's definitely in this football game. This is a big series right here. They need to keep out the end zone. Third time the Gators have been down here. There's two times they had to get field goals. Gets a couple of yards. Get right at the line of scrimmage, but dragged a couple of red shirts with him. Kenny Smith able to make the stop for Alabama, the sophomore out of Meridian, Mississippi. And, Bob, you know what you think about here? If you're a Florida fan, you're thinking, gosh knows, we put the football on the ground an awful lot. That's the hardest thing. 
Second key and not fumbling, of course, Bob, is just that concentration, thinking about the football, just keeping it in there. As Steve Spurrier told us, tuck it away. Florida has fumbled, ten, has lost 10 of 13 fumbles on offense. Tenth play on this drive. And Johnson directing traffic on second down and goal. And again, good pressure as they try to get the ball to Kareem, Kenny Smith, and also Kendall Moorhead able to make the, get the pressure and Canary Knight. You know what's amazing here is that the receiver is open on the out pattern, but what happened is as Johnson was running back, he was under so much pressure that he's throwing off his back foot. Kenny Smith is in his face, Moorhead is in his face. There's several guys that are just putting pressure on him, and he's not allowed to step forward and drill that football. Gillespie now comes in a tailback for the Gators on third down and goal. They want to try and get it into the end zone for the first time today. but they did that time. Well, he's a big playmaker. He's the outstanding man-on-man -man coverage, and it just like just like he read the quarterback's eyes saying, yeah, I'm going to come off my coverage, and he did, and he intercepted that ball. That is a huge turnaround for Alabama. the block at the point of attack, and Alabama's going to have a first down at the 37. Now, this is a quick out. You'll see Millens come in. Millens comes on right there. You see he's got George outside there block. Now, just come back inside, pick up the yardage. Outstanding call by Alabama. Now, all of a sudden, you've got John David Phillips saying, hey, wait a minute. I don't want to be over there sitting down. I better do something. Phillips going to be fixed. Oh, what a hit he took. Teddy Sims came will play their whole career and not get a shot like that. That is, I mean, that's like you like you got a dummy standing back there and you're in practice. Give John David Phillips some credit for getting up. He's going to try it again. He gets knocked down at the 30. Alabama fans not John very David happy. Andrews out came in and moved him. And now Phillips comes Peterson. back onto the field. And Along Alabama's faced with a third down and long. Mike Peterson again runs down John David Phillips. I don't know what Phillips' play was this time, but this looked like he bailed out of that pocket awfully early. Drop back, set up, and it just came out. Now, there's Sal, number five. You see him there? A lot of times you don't see quarterbacks stand on the sideline with their helmet on. Sal says, I'm ready to play. John David Phillips trying to produce here. Here's the blitz again. He just got beat on him and him again. Two sacks in the possession as Mike Peterson, his second sack of the day. And Alabama's got a punter. Johnny Rutledge, the other line, the middle linebacker, and Kurtz get a lot of uh, a lot of publicity. But look right here, 29 Peterson, nobody on him. This time, John David Phillips says, "Ooh, I see that number 29 coming from the outside." Dave, obviously Alabama has got to do something about that blocking scheme. Yeah. Four sacks today already, Bob. That's a, that's quite a lot. 
Daniel Pope punts it away. Full on has got it. And Pope goes a high wobbly kick against the wind. And the ball bounces out of bounds. Capel came up to try and make the play, couldn't get there. No return on the game. And just let the ball Florida bounce ball. out. But Florida will have outstanding field position as they try and keep the pressure on Alabama, leading 6-3 here at Bryant Denny. So far, a rough day for John David Phillips. They'll try and rally this Alabama team, still down just by a field goal. And Florida's had three shots to get touchdowns, but yet only two field goals. Jesse Palmer now into the game again as quarterback as the Gators keep rotating. Pick of about six, Daryl Jackson makes the play. And Tony Nixon for Alabama. on the coverage for Alabama. And Bob, it's interesting to see Florida almost like they're going back to the basics. Little hook in, drive the ball in, have some things go right. Steve Spurrier is a master out there of offense. Sometimes when you're when your offense is just kind of sputtering, you're overthrowing the ball, you're not picking up first downs, just go back to those basics. Curl, fly pattern, little cut inside. Dixon. Jackson has some run to room. Tony Dixon made the room to run. <laughs> and uh, Tony Dixon made a terrific play around the ankles. Well, again, Steve Spurrier and his staff trying to mix up the offense, keep him off guard, use Terry Jackson back there because he is such a force. But they really are one dimensional when you start to look at their running backs. So they are, their halfback, Terry Jackson, gets most of the call. A lot of possessions in this game. This is the 11th possession, the sixth time. For the first down, let's see where they mark it. Jesse Palmer put his head down and tried to ride right behind his center. Jesse Palmer's on the first down goal. Well, he had, to, he had to make about the 41-yard the, uh, line. I think they got a good enough push, but you're right. But you know what? If, if I'm Alabama, I'm turning around saying, hey, you can do that. You can move the chain. Just move them little by little because they're playing the clock right now with under nine minutes to play in this half. Gators with 38 yards on the ground. You can see the tie at minus three. Sacks figure into that. He was open. He was behind Hunter. But the pass turned him around a bit. So Florida will have it second and ten. Boy, he did turn. McGriff did turn Travis Hunter. I mean, Antoine Hunter, number 39, around. Left of your screen, you're going to see McGriff come to fake the inside. Anytime your defensive back is that far separated from the wide receiver, he's been fooled on the play. You can see if this pass was just a little bit shorter, that would have been a touchdown. Alabama's got its dime package in there. Six defensive backs on second down. Florida's thrown the ball 20 times. They've run it 13. Johnson the throw. Looks for something. Pick up 15 or 20 yards. Big down for Alabama. 
third down, a boatload. Gotta get it to the 31 yard line. Here the blitz. Palmer. And again, the receiver falls down. John Cavell trips it to the field goal flag. And the Gators have to give it up and listen to the hand for the Alabama defense. Bob, I was down on the field earlier as we listened to this tremendous ovation by the crowd. The field is dry. And it's a flat field. The grass is not dug up. There's very little excuse for Florida be, to be going down, tripping their wide receivers, tripping as much as they are. In fact, the field was recently resodded right on the middle of the field. So new grass, firm footing. And Wazalewski in to punt it away for the Gators. Driving, lovely kick, Richard. position as they trail by three. Punt was 39 yards and the return for Richard of nine. Alabama trying to take the lead when they come back. First a word from your local SEC stations. Helped build its tradition with defense, and the defense has turned back the Gators today, keeping them out of the end zone. John David Phillips returns that quarterback for Alabama. Bangle with good field position. Here's the blitz again. He avoids the first one, not the second. Good pressure that time as, again, Raquan Manuel was the first one in there, and then Javon Kirsch finished it up, and Phillips having problem dodging those linebackers. Oh, he had problems that last series. The number was different, 29. Mike Peterson leveled him on that play. Came right back the next down, and you see him in your screen, and he gets them again. This time, all they did was change the numbers this series, Bob. David, looks like Florida's running the same blitz time yeah. after time until they block him. It is. It's an outside backer, and he's just, I mean, just jumping off the ball, getting into that backfield. They've got to do something to pick him up, slow him down. Pressure again, and Phillips goes down. The same song about fourth verse. John David Phillips. Well, I wonder why they don't go back to Andrew Zhao. He had a little bit of success. I mean, I know you want you don't want to discourage your young quarterback, well, your quarterback John David Phillips, but you've got Zhao over there, number five, who had success. Well, but let's also John David, he's not having a lot of time to do much of anything back there. No, that's true. He's getting an avalanche right here. You see the penetration. He has to step up in the pocket. Now you take your head down. You're just looking just to avoid contact. Reggie McGrew was in there for Florida in the middle. Wow. He's six sacks already. And on the screen over the middle, and John Alexander just lucky to get that one. And again, Reggie McGrew was right there on top of him and Ed Chester as well. So the middle of that defense really played well that time again for Florida Alabama's got to give it back well that's too quick a series for Alabama and Mike Dubose you cannot just go out there bang 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 give the ball back because this Florida team is so powerful that time I think Ed Chester got a hand in on that ball and knocked the ball out of uh, Sean Alexander's arm but they have got to put first downs together Daniel Pope on the punt Get a kick this time, see what the roll turns out. It's a Florida roll, and they down it at the 32 yard line as Alabama covering the punt was Gary Barnes. And so the Gators now will take over at the 31 yard line. Florida leads it 6 to 3 on a buggy day in Alabama. Last time these two teams met, of course, they played for a SEC championship. Florida won that game 45 to 30. Last time they played in Tuscaloosa was 1990. Florida won that game 17-13. Palmer in a quarterback. Swing pass. Terry Jackson. He's got room to run. Good. Oh, no, that's Gillespie. Gillespie gets the midfield. Breaks a tackle. Still on his feet. And he's dragged down followed by Tony Dixon. Gillespie on the swing pass. Did much of that on his own. And Florida right back into Alabama territory. And Bob, this had to be a break in coverage because Gillespie is going to come out of the backfield and watch how open he is right now. When he sees him, bang. Now there's nobody out there. Now every coach that's ever coached football will tell you you cannot arm tackle. That's an arm tackle. There's an arm tackle. There's an arm tackle. There's another arm tackle. Finally they get him down. 
Gators now starting to rack up the yards against Alabama. Touchdown strike on the Gators built the lead to 12 to 3. Boy, he just turned Michael Fagan around. Fagan number three. You see him in the right of your screen right there. This is just a simple post pattern. But what McGriff does is when he comes off the line, he just freezes Fagan. Just bang. He freezes him, plants. He's got that inside, Jeff just Chandler that inside break. Point. That's just a pitch and catch for his fourth touchdown. And Jeff Chandler on for the extra point. Good. Jesse Palmer, 13 to touchdown strike Alabama of the season. The Florida touchdown strike. Right Ryan on target to his senior receiver, Travis McGriff, his fourth TD catch of the year. Well, again, you'll see right here as he drops back and looks right there. You see the break inside. McGriff gave you, just gave that great head fake, went right back inside, just wide open. Again, we can look at it. This is just picture book passing. You see, lay it up there, just catches him right in stride. The receiver just looks the football. Do you see how McGriff looked that football in? That's the mark of a great receiver, just looks it into his body. Big plays by Gillespie and McGriff, and Florida has the lead. Our nationwide insurance scholar athlete of the week is tailback Terry Jackson of the University of Florida. The senior from Gainesville has a 3.6 GPA in business administration. Congratulations to Terry Jackson, our Nationwide Insurance Scholar Athlete of the Week. He comes from a great football family. And of course, as we mentioned, he's also the student body vice president this year. And Armin Richard to receive for Alabama. Brother and his dad, both Gators. Of course, had a knee injury last year in the fourth game of the season, was out the rest of the year. That really hurt the Gator attack. And he's now bounced back to be a terrific leader on this team. Also academic, all SEC, 95, 96, and 97, Terry Jackson. Well, Bob, if you're on Florida's your side, you're saying, hey, we can go for the kill now. If you're on Alabama's side, you're saying, hey, we've got to hang with him. We've got to be able to get a touchdown, get some first downs in, to get in this football game. No return on They don't want to let this football, get out of, this football game get out of range for them. I wonder which quarterback will come out, Bob. It's like Andrew Zows right in the middle. Number five is David, John David Phillips, unable to move the Alabama team the last two possessions. And so they're going to turn things back over to the freshman from Lake Butler, Florida. Here comes Andrew Zow, and the crowd responds. It's interesting. It's not saying that Andrew Zow is a better quarterback than John David Phillips, but today he brought a spark with him. And that's what Mike Dubose and their staff is looking for, a spark on offense. They got four snaps last week against Arkansas. Right up the middle, Sean Alexander. Alexander has not had a whole lot of room to run so far. Jerry Warren makes the stop for the Gators. Dave, talk about the just how impressive, though, this Florida front seven is. Everybody's oh. raving about it. I mean, they say seven. They've actually got about 15 guys <laughs> yeah, with do. the depth they've got. Well, that's not where their problem is. Their front seven is as strong as anything. When you start picking out teams, if you went around the nation and picked out players, a lot of the players that you would pick on your starting defense are that front seven. That's how strong they are. Veteran Layden, just a, just a marvel. He's not running against that front seven. Nothing. Sean Alexander, Sean Alexander knocked down again by Mike Peterson. He's been flying around the football all day. Peterson's one of those guys, Dave, he didn't get a lot of recognition. He just makes play. No, exactly right. He's solid. The senior is out there. He's done really well. He's got five tackles and two sacks today already. But you're right. When you're going up against Javon Kurse, as you call him, the freak. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody calls him. Yeah, I know. Peterson had 14 tackles last week against Kentucky. He's a Butkus nominee. Alabama's been dreadful on third down conversions. Two of seven. Face third and four. Calvin Hill, his knee hit the ground, and he made the reception, but the senior from Gallatin, Tennessee, helps Alabama get a first down. Zow gives him a spark, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Good pressure right here. You're going to see Zow as he delivers the football. He gets, he's got a crowd in front of him, but he looks at football and just delivers a strike. You see he'll put that knee down. He's right down right there. Touches it down at the 33-yard line. Zao came into the game, as we mentioned, only two of five for eight yards on the year. And the freshman getting a chance to play today. Led his 
high school team with two state championships. Top one team here. They've got her to see As he finds the wide receiver, Eric Clark. Freshman out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And Sal has the tie going. Down by 10 points. And you see a concerned Bob Stoops on the Florida sideline. But look how quickly Sal sees it right there. He throws the ball with confidence. In the split in between the zone, that's exactly what you want to do. Deliver that football on time. It looks like Sal can move this offense. Eric Locke had two catches coming into today's game. He's passed that already. He's still got three minutes to go second quarter. They try. Sean Alexander not much there. Sean Alexander. I was looking at a play that time. I thought if Sal was to fake to Sean Alexander and roll out, he'd have a lot of room there. There's Bob Stoops right there. You see him giving the single signal for the defense. He wants a triangle. Boy, he's an outstanding, just an outstanding defensive quarter. Now they've held Sean Alexander in check last week. So did Arkansas as he had 21 carries and only 48 yards today. Seven carries for 15 yards. Alexander, of course, two-time SEC Offensive Player of the Week. His efforts early against BYU and South. Backside hit as he throws, and the ball is short, almost intercepted. Get pressure that time on the blitz by Manuel. And you know what's amazing on this play? Every time, every time that Alabama drops back to pass with no backs in the back, just the quarterback, you get this pressure right here from the side. See the backside backer just coming in there? He just he just kind of lopes in there. That's Manuel, number four. He didn't run like Peterson ran in there, but uh, that's that same blitz. And you can see him get hit. They're lucky that that ball didn't get intercepted. Alabama, three of eight on third down conversions. They'll try it again. see that just when he just delivers that football right in there he throws it well he just zips that ball in there Bob Tony George is right there but just about a half step behind that was enough to get the completion to Calvin Hall who's having a big day 21 to go shovel pass yards up the middle from Sean Alexander Sean Alexander the ball carrier just fights his way back to the line of scrimmage well Ed Chester and Reggie McGrew in that middle two big guys 94 and 92 there's some hosses. Boy, they play. They use their hands so well. And that's so important for a defensive player. Get in there, use those hands, keep that separation slide. David, the people watching the game will say, well, they can throw the ball all day long on Florida, but you, you've got to keep them honest, don't you? Yes, you do. You've got to keep them honest. You've got to go to that run, especially when you have a running back like Sean Alexander. You've got a, you've got a whale of a running back there if you can get him open. Eighth play of the drive. He's got his man. Yards. So it's going to be third down. Clock is down to 90 seconds to go. Keep around. And this first half. And Bob, that's a lot of time. What you do is you don't want to give the football back to Florida. So you want to use your time. You don't need to call a timeout yet, even though Alabama has three. They've got two, actually. Remember the third one. That's you. You're exactly right. They have two. Third down conversions. Four of nine. Big one here to keep this potential scoring drive alive. Sal dumps it almost to the center. That was a spy right there. Reggie yeah, McGrew was spying that one. Wasn't it? That's exactly what McGrew did. Hit into the hit into his lineman and then dropped on back. It's an interesting play. Watch McGrew. He's right down here. See him getting back here. To, he's hitting in the play. He's actually a spy tackle. Just trying to get those hands up and it worked. Well, last week, Ryan, a 55-yard field goal attempt and then he made now 52 yards. Lutner trying to get a little leg into this one. Remember, he's kicking into the wind, too. Did he get enough? Did he get enough of it? He had enough, but it wasn't the right direction. The kick is wide So the 52-yard field goal goes to the right. Florida turns Florida, back Florida. Alabama, and now the Gators will have 53 seconds to play with it. Dave, you know that's what you said. It was you don't want to give it back with too much time left. 
You're exactly right, Bob. You don't want to give Florida 50 seconds for Florida is a long time. They can drive the length of a field. I remember, I think it was last year or the year before with Werfel, their average touchdown drive was not much longer than that. Jesse Palmer back in at quarterback. Gators have scored one touchdown, a couple of field goals. They got to drive it 65 yards here for a score. And they have all three timeouts left. There's the screen pass to Terry Jackson. Right down right in the middle of the field. As Jackson picks up 10 before he's rolled down, Travis Carroll is there for Alabama. Let's see what the penalty flag is. Yeah, I think you're going to find holding against Florida on Travis Carroll. Travis Carroll's the middle linebacker. He's got that back on the play. And I think that's exactly what the call is going to be. It's going to go against Florida holding on Travis Carroll. Holding on the offense. 15 yard 50 from the bridge of the line of scrimmage. Still first down. New source for sports on the internet, jpsports.com. Now online, each week we'll bring you the previews of our upcoming telecast and in-depth coverage of the SEC. For the inside scoop on SEC football, log on to jpsports.com. Dave Rowe has an insightful uh, story <laughs> today, feature story in there about SEC football. Drop play. Robert Gillespie in there. And the ball comes loose. Who's got it? Alabama says they've got it. He was down, though. They're sorting things out. They're going to say he was down. Yeah. Brown can't cause a fumble, and you can't pull the ball out once he, once that knee or a part of the body hits the ground. That's what the official says. He was down. Reggie Miles came out of there with the football. Let's see. Gillespie right in here. Now, he's not down yet. Now he's down. Oh, I don't know. Well, that was close. close. Yeah. Mainly because he fell lateral to the ground. His knee might have been on the ground. Spencer had him wrapped up. You see the official in great position to make the call? Yeah, he had a good look at yeah. it. And they can't get the final playoff. Jesse Palmer mm -hmm. watches the clock tick down, but the Gators go to the locker room leading 13-3. Alabama kept them out of the end zone except for that last one in the second quarter as it's 13-3 here. Florida leading. And David Logan now is down with Steve Spurrier. By three, it's uh, by ten at the half. Uh, uncharacteristic of your team, first half play. Well, we had some chances, but uh, we, we misfired, and uh, Alabama's playing tough. You know, we just got to keep playing 60 minutes, see what happens. All right, they got a different quarterback in the second half. You're going to do anything different, Coach, against them defensively? Our defense playing real well. All right, appreciate that, Steve Spurrier. We'll be back at, at, at for halftime. The score here, Florida 13, Alabama 3. Our halftime show coming up. We'll be right back. Today's Bell South SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Dodge, the truck stop of the New South, the new Dodge. By Duckhead, khaki since 1865. By Nationwide Insurance. For insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs, call a Nationwide Insurance agent today and get Nationwide on your side. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher. You either have it or you don't. Life is a sport. Drink it up. By Red Roof Inns, where you'll find nice people and an honest value. For reservations at any Red Roof Inn, call 1-800-THE-ROOF or your travel agent. And by the all-new BMW 3 Series. Everything your car does well, it does brilliantly. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa in a defensive struggle. Florida out on top of Alabama by a score of 13-3. Well, folks, listen, when you have over 300 yards of total offense in a football game, it's a strong bet that you're going to be the player of the week. Well, last week, Kentucky's Craig Geese put up those numbers on his way to earning our Buick Player of the, the Week. SEC Player of the Week is presented by Buick and your local Buick dealer. Kentucky's Craig Yeast was a man on a mission last Saturday for the Wildcats. Yeast totaled 331 all-purpose yards and three touchdowns in the Cats game against Florida. Yeast pulled down six passes for 206 yards, including touchdown strikes of 97 and 74 yards. The 97-yard TD reception was the second longest in SEC history. Yeast also returned a kickoff 100 yards for a touchdown. That's Kentucky's Craig Yeast, our Buick Player of the Week. Now, Yeast's 331 yards was the third highest total in SEC history. The 206 yards that he amassed 
receiving set a school record. Well, guys, speaking of total yardage, Alabama's going to need a whole lot more to get back in this one. They're playing well defensively, and we need to see more of Sean Alexander. Maybe this new mobile young quarterback that they have in Zao can spark this offense. Right now, defense is playing pretty good, guys. I think you're right, David, but uh, seven sacks for Florida's oh, that's, defense against that's Alabama killer. stands out. That's the killer, Bob. That's the big stat of this first half. They have got to stop that. They've got to take that pressure off the quarterback. Can't ask much more from the Alabama defense except for the one touchdown strike. They played very well. Yeah, they've been very, very strong. Started off Florida, kicked the field goal, went up three to nothing. Then Alabama came back, and, of course, Phillips fumbled the football. And they gave it up right here, but their defense stiffened and held Florida to another field goal. That was a real tribute to their defense, and they really needed that. Then Alabama gets good field position, and they go down there, and they kick a field goal. It wasn't pretty, but it made it 6-3. to three. Johnson is sacked in the second quarter. Under some pressure, he gets sacked. But veteran quarterbacks come back, and they throw touchdown passes, Bob. That's exactly right. Alabama's defense kept them, kept them really off balance with those blitzes, but they catch him here on man-to-man -man coverage. Yep, man-to-man, -man, and they catch Travis McGriff. This made it 13-3. to three. He gave Barn a little bit of breathing room going in at halftime. So let's look at the Pizza Hut stats from the first half. You see the rushing yards, minus two for Alabama. Sean Alexander, eight carries for 16 yards in the first half. Turnovers, each one, half one in the first half. And uh, time of possession, you see Alabama's had it. They just haven't been able to score. Yeah, they, they just have not been able to do anything with it. But Zal gave him a little bit of spark. We talked about that when he came in, Bob. He gave him a little bit of spark. So maybe he might start the second half and see if they can keep that spark up. But the Florida defense has put so much pressure on oh. Alabama. Every Every yard has been precious. Oh, boy, they are. I mean, it's tough running in the middle, and then they've had that incredible outside pressure by their outside linebacker. Seven sacks. That's yeah. a ton. Mike Peterson's had a big first half for Florida. Let's look at Dave Rose. Rewind. What's going to happen in the second half? Well, for Florida, keep up the pressure. They just need to keep the pressure on the quarterback. They've done really well, and they need to score points when they're not used to picking field goals. For Alabama, it's blocked the blitz. My goodness, you, if you can't expect your quarterback to, to even do anything when you got a blitz like that, and they have got to score points. They can't keep on relying on their defense. Alabama's been able to move it at times, but they've only gotten one field goal in this first half. Alabama trails by 10 at home. Second half kickoff coming up from Tuscaloosa in just a moment. The Bell South SEC Game of the Week is being brought to you by Morgan Keegan, the South's premier investment firm. By Sonic, where we invite you to drive in for a change. By Buick and your local Buick dealers. Isn't it time for a real car? By Pizza Hut, home of your favorite pan pizza. By Just for Feet, where the 13th pair is free. And by Amico. You expect more from a leader, and you get it. One of the historic landmarks on this Alabama campus, the Denny Chimes. Inside Bryant Denny Stadium, our Bell South SEC Game of the Week. Bob Kessling, Dave Rowe, David Logan. Alabama leads or trails by 10 as we get set to start things here in the second half. The Gators will kick off. Mike DeBose's team, Dave, needs to do something to put that off. Well, they certainly do. They need to get a spark. They need to take the pressure off their defense. I would look for them to go back to Andrew Zow because he threw well in the first half. Bob, and that's something that John David Phillips did not do. He did not react well to the pressure. So to keep that spark, maybe go to Zow. He's got his hat on. Last time Alabama won in this series was 1992. 28-21 in Birmingham for the SEC championship. Last time they beat Florida in Tuscaloosa, Alabama took the Gators 23-12, 1978. Now we're set to go. Second half, Thatcher with this Jeff Chandler will kick off. Sail deep into the end zone, and Richard decides to that's Fernando Bryant. No, it is Richard. 26 decides to bring it out. Makes a break down the sideline. Great return by Arvin Richard. Benny Alexander makes the stop for Florida. So a little spark for Alabama by Arvin Richard, the returner. Well, this is about a 200 yard run for about a 35 yard gain. But look at this, breaks to the outside, finds a little seam here, now cuts back against the grain. Right here, breaks an arm, tackle right there, he breaks a tackle there, and then just drags him an extra few yards, so they get good field position out at the 35-yard line. And there's number five, Andrew Zown, to start the second half. John Alexander, the standing tailback. The pitch to Alexander. Can't get outside, there's nothing there. 
Sean Alexander as Morris lines out. Tico Brown comes up from free safety, and there's Mike Peterson one more time. Well, Sean Alexander is a much better slash runner. When he turns his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, right there, or I should say perpendicular to the line of scrimmage, he's not gaining ground. And he's, he's not the type of a runner back that's going to get in the hole and get back outside, Bob. See his numbers, he just, he had 18, he just lost four of that. See if they don't put that uh, blitz back on him, that pressure with no backs in the backfield. Down, over the middle. Quincy Jackson, the the complete the Jackson able to make the slant. Well, he's got ready, knocked on his keister, but made the completion. Boy, he did, that outside pressure. Every time they've gone to that no back set, that pressure's come from the outside. This time, right to your, left to your screen, boom. It wasn't a long pass, but at least he got it off. Third down, just and over the yards to go. To make the stop. John David Phillips watches as Zao gets the start this half. Phillips was not able to convert third down conversions very well. We'll see what Zao does here. And Alabama's first in the second half. Three. Swing back. Jackson knocked down. Gets across the 35-yard line. 
leads to Terry Jackson. Well, that was good Griffin hustle. makes the play. Yeah, that was good hustle by Griffin. He's in what, number 97. He's on the play, he's rushing the passer, bang, turns, throws the football, comes down there. You know, it, sometimes it's hard to inspire a team. And I think that's the problem that Steve Spurrier is having a little bit because these guys are so good, Bob. They know that they can play at half speed and three-quarter speed and, and really compete with a lot of players, with a lot of teams. I think Florida's just gotten a wake-up call by Alabama scoring that touchdown. And I know Steve Spurrier is probably happy about that, but unhappy about the score. Palmer, Simpson, got his man. Completion, Kareem makes the catch, and Fernando Bryant wraps him up. Florida's down in Alabama territory. Kareem, Fernando Bryant made the tackle for Those Alabama. Lyman for Florida gives such great time. That's the problem where they've really had a problem. As we look at Bryant hobble off there, they can't afford to lose him on the outside. This is a curl pattern where you run down about 12, 15 yards and just curl back in. You see there that Doug uh, Jesse Palmer's under no pressure. Right there, just curl, just cut right back in. I think Fernando, when he, when he pressured his foot back, he may have twisted something. Palmer gets away from the pressure from Morehouse, throws it back across the field, dangerous pass. Trying to get it to his tight end, White Edge. Travis Carroll has had a beat on that one, but just couldn't get to it. Hey, that's a dangerous pass. Well, that was. Throw across the field much. Yeah, now there's Bryant. Now that, that looks as if it's a cramp. But you remember when he was backpedaling and planted that leg? That may have been a cramp. You don't think, well, you either think cramp or maybe pulling a hamstring, Bob. But they can't afford to lose him out there. Well, they got fluids right there next to him, so obviously trying to get some fluids in to keep him from cramping if that indeed is the problem. Well, they picked on Fagan last time. See if they don't do it again. Well, off the middle, Jackson. First down, maybe about a couple of yards short. You know, Dave, that has been one thing about Florida. They have not been able to run the football effectively all season. Yeah, this is draw play. You just shift over and then just find the hole through there. Just look, find that hole, get out out there, pick up a couple good blocks in there, and find yardage. But you're right, Bob. They have not been able to run with any confidence. Not where they've been able to stick it in there and just play that smash football down the field. They've got a great running back in Terry Jackson. They've got an excellent offensive line. Jackson did have 116 yards last week against Kentucky. Third down. They need four yards to go. Clark is knocking down. They don't get it all. Play clock runs out. Steve Spurrier shakes his head. They call timeout right before the clock ran down, but let's see if they're going to get it. They tried. On the offense. Five yards to go. Saw a five-yard penalty to try to get the timeout call, but didn't get it. Yeah, the clock ran out. That was Frazier who turned around and looked yeah. at the official trying to signal timeout, but the clock had already run down. But, you know, that's part of the problem that you have with rotating quarterbacks. He has to run in with the play, or you have to signal the play in. And you see that, uh, you see right there, you see Jesse Palmer look to the sideline. Now, what's the play? The clock is already starting to run down. Johnson's in there now. He may come out, and then Palmer come to the sideline, and you see the clock just ticking down. The clock's down. 13, 12, 11, 10, just keeps on ticking down. Now they break the huddle with seven seconds. They get to the line. They've got to hurry now. Third down, three, two, and now he does get the timeout. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, Dave, this is what, what troubled them in the Tennessee loss. Exactly. They had some communications problems and just getting the plays off. Spurrier told us that uh, at times he had problems with the center just snapping the ball, and that's a lot of the problems. And now Florida trying to reorganize up 13 10 here in Tuscaloosa. His team as they trail up by three to Florida. Heavy underdogs in this game. Alabama has played the Gators toe to toe. Third down and long. Jesse Palmer at quarterback. McGriff, and that's a first down. Boy, what a catch by McGriff. That ball was thrown behind him. He had to go back against his body and catch that. And we all took know the speed that Doug Johnson throws with. Left of your screen over here, you're going to see it right in there. Bang, there comes the ball. Look at that, back against the body. That's a tough catch. Feet sliding out from under you. That just shows the great concentration by Travis McGriff. The Palmer gets the completion on third down and gives a first down now to Florida as they march now deeper into Alabama territory. Palmer sets up time. Out and McGriff got it inside the five. Jesse Palmer's pass. Complete to Travis McGriff. I tell you what, Dave, McGriff is something. He just gets 
Well, and they're, remember, they lost Fernando Bryant. They're not able to match Fernando Bryant up against the grip. And they've got Bailey in there one-on-one. -on -one. And what he does is he takes Bailey inside, or Griff takes him inside, and you see him just curled to the outside there and look that football in. Just a well-thrown football. Spoken about Bryant, David Logan's got an update on him. Yeah, the update right now is that he does have cramps in both legs. He got an IV at halftime, and I think right now they're going to take him back into the locker room for another IV. That's the situation. Hands off. Tailback. That's Eugene McCaslin. Eugene and McCaslin, not much there. He missed the first couple of games this year with a one-yard suspension. Now he's back in trying to help. Remember, Bo Carroll, we haven't spoken about him. He is not here today, out with a knee injury. So that's some of their depth, not only in the tailback spot, but also in their kicking game. But Carroll not here. McCaslin getting a chance to play. Now it's Gillespie in a tailback for the Gators. On second and goal, pitch back Gillespie. Good defense by Alabama. As Perry Knight stuffed it out, wouldn't let him get outside, and Alabama drops it. Well, what Knight did was just exceptional for the outside force, and that is that he turned it back in, and even when he started to break to the outside, you're going to see Canary Knight out here. There he is, 58, right out there. He's going to keep this outside position, turn the football That's back inside, and make, make the tackle. Third and just don't get any better than that. Knight, of course, out of Tallahassee, Florida. Got his first start against Arkansas last week. And playing well today. Florida. Turned away twice when they've been inside the 10-yard line. Now they've got third down. Need to get pressure on the quarterback. Palmer into the end zone. Complete. Corey yes, can get there. Good coverage by Alabama. As Reggie Miles on him one on one. And Florida's got to settle for another field goal. You know, what, as we watch this incomplete pass, you see Johnson get some time, excuse me, Palmer get some time to look out there, and throws the football away because really great coverage there by Alabama. But I can't remember the last time I saw Florida try three field goals in one game. They're not used to that. Jeff Chandler on to attempts. He's hit two from 24 already this game. Billy Young to hold. And the kick is going to be right through there. So Florida now with three field goals on the afternoon. And it's 16 to 10. Mike DeVos' team hanging tough. We'll be back to Tuscaloosa with first the word from your local SEC station. Florida leads by six, 16-10. The Gators trying to chomp on Alabama, but that tie defense has been very, very tough today. Arvin Richard is back deep for Alabama again. Cody Millen's also back there, but Richard will take this one. Good block by Millen's, and Richard runs it across the 33 yard line. Jump like a teammate there. Most of the time, if the guy didn't get the ball kicked to him, he, he won't hustle. But that time, Millens came down and made a good kick, kick uh, block. And now it's time for Alabama to take it over. Millens, he's cramping up. Yeah, and the coaches got concern there. And we see Millens go off the field hobbling. See, maybe he has cramps. But a lot of concern on these Alabama coaches. They've just driven the football down the field. They scored a touchdown. They got results. They need another one. Andrew Zow on. That quarterback, Millens, of course, is also a wide receiver for Alabama. That takes one out of the rotation. Remember, Michael Vaughn not playing today because of the suspension. Sean Alexander tries to break it outside. Alexander, his first long carry off the day for the first down from the 47-yard line. Finally, the junior from Florence, Kentucky, is able to break one. You know, he did two things on this play. First of all, he switched the ball in there. He kind of switched the ball to the outside. Watch, he's going to go over here, not find a hole, and go all the way back against the grain. Now, right there, look, watch right here. You'll see him switch the football back over. McAdley, number 80, a wide receiver, got a great block downfield on Manuel, number four, and that's what sprung him to the outside. Alabama playing those young wide receivers in this game. They've been doing a lot of good things. Cut back, not this time. The Gators right there, Javon Kirsch. 
Sean Alexander in the middle. Jerry Rutledge on the play. Play. Snuff that one out. Well, Bob, you look at this this Gator defense, and just remember Jerry that uh, in '96 they held their opponents to 50 yards rushing, and I mean it was just incredible the average that they had this year. 66 of the 134 rushes have been for one yard or less. The announcers of the game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. The broadcast a copyright presentation and a use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Eric Locke in motion on second down. George was our hero player of the secondary. And this is his first start after that loss at uh, Tennessee where he got injured. But look at his recovery. Looking back, looks at the receiver, sees him there. Great recovery to get those hands inside. He's beaten right there, makes an excellent recovery. And that's what Florida does so well. They have that great team speed, Bob, that you mentioned. Speed kills. Oh, oh boy, does it ever. Speed help that time. Five of the 11 on third down. Sal, a big one here near midfield. It was made by Mike Peterson again, and then Tico Brown almost able to come up with the interception. And Peterson again coming for that outside blitz. Every time they see that single backer, and look how high it is. I think the only reason he missed it is because the receiver cut his legs out from underneath him. Eric Locke maybe saved yeah. a touchdown because Brown had a whole full steam up, full head of steam up. Here's Daniel Pope in the punt again. the 30 and that's where Mike DeBose's defense has got to come up strong again. The the Gators lead it 16 to 10 and Doug Johnson is sent back out of the field for the Florida Gators. Fans to compliment our broadcast. Jefferson Bonnet Sports brings you jpsports.com on the internet. To preview our game of the week and see video clips of last week's action, be sure to log on soon. It's an exciting source for all you need to know about SEC football. Florida leads 16-10. Gators with a ball. Running over a couple of red shirts and picks up about five on first down. Now, Bob, if you're Steve Spurrier and the Florida Gators, they want to take control of this football game. There's not many games that they're in this late in the football game where they're only up by six points. Steve Spurrier knows that. His offense just has kind of sputtered around here all day long. But they know with that big offensive line and the running backs they have and that the great arms of those quarterbacks, they can take control of this football game. Second down. Alabama hoping for a turnover. Make a mistake. Johnson. Sizemore will be the guy who will have to make the decision. See if they pick up the flag. Well, that's the first thing that Johnson said. He said, hey, wait a minute. I had a player right there. That's a heads-up call by Johnson. Watch when he drops back here. He's not just trying to throw it downfield. He's in the grass. But as he's going down, you'll see right there he's going down. But right there, he's throwing the football. I mean, with velocity, he's throwing somebody. Now, Mike DeBose doesn't like that. So take the sack away from Carroll and give it third down. And six yards to go for Florida. And Bob, see how big that play turns around because it would have been third down in about 15 or 16. Rolls out, throws back across his body, and has his man. 
completion to McCaslin. And that will be a first down for the Gators. Johnson thrown across his body, but he's right on target. Boy, what a huge wave off that penalty that penalty was. Pressure there by number 54. More head in there. He gets the pressure to the outside to get outside of him. Now Johnson just flips it across his body. First down, Florida keeps the drive alive. And again, you go back to when that flag was waved off. That was a huge play for Alabama. It went against Alabama, I should say. Dave, I think you're right. You would like to see Florida, if you're Florida fans, see those Gators just count it up the middle a little bit. Yeah, they'd Along like to take Elvis control of this football, take the emotion out of this football. This crowd is still in this football game. A three -yard game the game. See the numbers today, Johnson and Jesse Palmer. So 14 out of 32 on the completions. 257 yards. That's not bad for any quarterback. Palmer's got the touchdown strike. Also to Travis McGriff. One thing I really like about Johnson and Palmer, they're well-schooled quarterbacks. They don't throw the football in, into trouble. This is an out pattern. If the ball is incomplete, it's not going to it's not going to be intercepted. They throw velocity. They throw ropes. A straight line. They don't loft it. First down. The receiver gets good separation. Turns right around, and you see the timing of the pattern. Awfully hard to defend a play like that. It's perfect execution. Johnson has one interception today, but that's the only one of the season so far. Remember last year, he threw 12 of them, and that was a problem at times. Time's running out again. Three, two. One, they got it off. Johnson lobs it. Flag is down. Pass it from Cook McGriff. Maybe they did get it off. There's a flag on the play. Uh, he's got to be looking at that clock. And look at Steve Spurrier's looking at it. Now the clock is low. It's to his left over the tunnel where Florida comes out. And so he can't look straight ahead and look at the defense as he's going this way. He's got to go ahead and kind of glance over to his left to see where the clock is. There you see the clock. Yeah, there's the clock right up there, top of your screen there. You can see the, the dead ball. False start on the offense. If uh, five yards. There's the clock there, the 25 down. seconds. You see it on both sides there and there. And then he has the one, as you say, Bob, in the low end zone. It's a lot easier to look at that one in the low end zone. But you're right. You can't look straight down the field and see it. Those clocks are on the other side. And the pass is complete to Aaron Kinney, the tight end. Michael Fagan makes it down. Those clocks we showed, the, we showed, those are on the other end. And so the, the way Johnson's going right now, there are no clocks up on the scoreboard. So the only one you can't see is that one in the lower left. You're exactly right. That's, that's a very good point. His vision is not to look back at that big clock. It's to look at that one in the end zone. Good catch by the tight end. That's his third of the year. He's got a touchdown. Also, but that one makes it second down and short. Pick up the blitz, and Johnson lets it out, and the pass is complete. McGriff, what a great catch. Michael Fagan right on him with great concentration. He had to look over the top of Fagan, keep his feet in down, and McGriff with a big, big day for the Gators. Well, what happens on this play? McGriff gets, he doesn't, he look, kind of looks off the, the defender. He kind of fakes him out. You can see the ball thrown high there. See now he looks back there, looks the football in. He doesn't put his hands up until the last second. See right there, he puts his hands up. And the defender, Fagan, trying to get his arm up, he's trying to read the quarterback. His, his uh, I mean, the receiver, his eyes are to the back. He can't see the quarterback throw the football. McCaslin is standing tailback, and now the Gators decide they're going to take a timeout. Time and so the Gators burn their second time out of the half as Johnson comes over and Mike DuBose brings his defense over to see if they can stop him one more time. How many times can Alabama gear it up and keep them out of the end zone? It's been, it's been a struggle for their, their defense. They have stopped them several times. They need to stop them this time. Three field goals today for the Gators. As they lead it 16 to 10. Next Saturday, our Bell South SEC Game of the Week is an SEC West Showdown 
as Auburn takes on Mississippi State. Tigers one and two, but they have big play potential. Karsten Bailey, 12 career touchdowns, and that Auburn defense is always good with Jimmy Brumbaugh. Bulldogs sitting on top of the West, 2-0 and behind the running of James Johnson. He had a big game last week against South Carolina. So, see us next week, 12.30 East and 11.30 Central, Auburn and Mississippi State. And one thing, Bob, you see how Florida makes you pay? They waved off that penalty there. It would have been fourth down. They would have had to kick the football, or at least third down in a long yardage. They wave that off. They get a second chance, and then they just drive the field and take control of the football game. First and goal for Florida. As the ball spotted at the two-yard line, Terry Jackson back into the standing tailback. Johnson stays in at quarterback. Jackson, nothing. Alabama smelled that one out. Jenny Smith lost his helmet on the play, but makes the tackle. Well, number 88. Nice, sophomore out of Meridian. Yeah, that was a nice slant down inside by Kenny Smith, number 88. He's going to slam from the top of the screen. Over in there, you're going to see him just right there. Bang! There he is. He just brings him down right on the line of scrimmage. That's exactly what you want to do. Keep those legs driving, drive him back. A lot of times, Florida uses that little fade pass where they throw to the corner. An alley-oop pass. Kareem is at the top of the screen, the wide out, in a slot. Johnson, bootleg. Gets away from Morehouse. And he lost the football. He lost the football. Stanley had it. Can't hold on to it. Who's got it? Trevor Smith. Alabama's defense comes up with another big play. He's very, you can see him wiping his eyes because he knows that you cannot give up scoring opportunities. But watch what happens to Doug Johnson. He gets hit from the backside and pops the ball out. Right in here, he's going to hit right there. You see the ball come from the backside. The hand comes up. Now they almost make a mistake. They try to pick it up and run with it. Just outstanding hustle there. Hunter is the guy who reached in and knocked the ball away. Steve Stanley is the guy who tried to pick it up and almost lost it to Dwight Edge. And when he tries to pick it up right here, you want to just fall on it, because look at Edge. He dives on the football. But Travis Smith digs it out, and Alabama's in a hole, though. Backed up at the own two. McClintock, the touchdown score earlier, powers out to the five. Justin McLean to the five-yard line, a three-yard game. Florida, the turnovers that they had in the Tennessee game, well documented. You see this year, 11 fumbles already, only Second eight down, all of last year. It's something that they talk about. Coach Spurrier told us this week they've been practicing. They, in fact, have the ball carriers uh, holding footballs all during practice to get them to think about it. Johnson, that time, just didn't secure it. They call it putting it away. Put that elbow down, holding the point of that football, keeping it in tight. Six, a touchdown puts him in front. Sit back. No. A little slant. Calvin Hall couldn't hang Andrew on to it. Pass. He was open, but the pass Calvin just Hall. out in front of him. Incomplete. Well, that's a good call down there. A little slant into the inside. You're going to see him. A little short roll here. Right to the right of your screen right there. Coming over. Calvin Hall just broke a little bit off the pattern. Trying to get to see right there. He kind of stops running. And I think Zal was thinking that he was going to continue running across. And he knows that he should have had that football. Big down here for Alabama. They need to get a first down. I think you've got to go long. Maybe that crossing pattern again. Florida, they're going to come with the heat. Looking pressure. They just closed in on him. Derek Chambers, number 91. That's his first sack of the year. And Florida's defense stuffs him. Well, you see the cross in the middle right there. The two tackles take outside. The middle backer, Rutledge, steps right up in the center. And that's where they get pressure. They just come after him. Eighth, eighth sack of the day. Sean Alexander did a nice job picking up the blitz, but then the front wall of Alabama crumbled a bit. And Florida able to get there. So now... He's leading corner, needs a big one right here. Well, you talk about maybe taking a safety. That puts you down eight points, but you don't have to punt from the back of the end zone. He's punting into the wind as well. But he gets it out of there. Wow, what a hit. That's people back in his own territory. Gets it out there midfield. And he's got 
catches it, but Daniel Polk with a huge play. And now Florida will get the ball back, leading by six. 57-yard punt by Daniel Polk. Boy, and two, Bob, it was high. That thing had carry time. If you ever wanted Pope, if you ever wanted to get a big kick, he got it there. At least he makes Florida drive a long way. 16-10, the Gators have the lead. They come onto the field. Jesse Palmer gets the turn this time. Florida, go right back to what you've been doing well. Get those wide outs, curling patterns inside. Florida back. This is all out blitz. You're going to see Kenny Smith come over right in there. You're going to see everybody just coming on a hard blitz. Look at Smith. You talked about it. 88. Nobody touched him. Glenn Wagner, number 91 also, but nobody picked up Kenny Smith. And, Bob, you have to wonder how much these changes in this offensive line have confused or put a problem on Florida. They've had, they've had several different lineup changes. They've not played with the same starting offensive line all year. Rob Gary Jackson pulls his way back into Alabama territory. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage, however, so it'll be third down and a long nine to go as Tony Dixon comes up to make the tackle out of the secondary. Good block there by Rod Frazier, number 40 on Miles. Right there, bang, knock him outside. Look at Terry Jackson break off that block, picks up the big yardage. North and South running right there. Steve Spurrier's team needs a play here, and the third quarter comes to a close. They can't get it off. And so Florida will say, okay, we'll change ends and come at you again. But the Alabama fans behind their team, their Crimson Tide, a terrific effort today. Fourth quarter to go with Florida leading by six. Florida 16, Alabama 10 as we start the fourth quarter. Alabama has Fernando Bryant back in at left corner. He's been cramping up, and now he's teamed up one-on-one -on, -one on Travis McGriff. Time, Palmer, looking, rolling, shaped, fires it behind his intended receiver. He's complete, trying to hit Rod Frazier, who took a shot from Kelvin Sigler. And Florida's got it. Here the Duck Head stats through three quarters of play. And Dave, I think Alabama had a pretty good quarter. Well, I think they did too. They've got some yards. They've got more yards than they had last week. But more importantly, they're only down six points. You look at time of possession, the yardage is really misleading a little bit, Bob, but they do have more yards than they uh, had last week. Kelvin Sigler now goes deep for Alabama. He'll stand at the five. We'll see where exactly Florida's going to try and put this thing. Kozlowski. Sigler, fair catch, dropped it, loose football. And Florida has fallen on it. Let's see, they got a flag down. Was he interfered with Absolutely. as he tried to make the catch? Benny Alexander got inside that little cushion area. And the flag is down right at the, right about the 10-yard line. Bob, you have to give him two yards. That's going to be the call. Even though the return person runs up to the receipt, to the coverage team, you still have got to give him that two-yard. Uh, Sigler had to go back there. Arvin Richard not returning that kick, and that leads the, the question is Richard all right. Two yard violation of the buffer zone on the receiver. The Reds ball first down. So Big Red will take it over. Now watch this. You see the two yards right there. Now see now that's that's the two yard problem right there. He didn't give him the two yard, interfered with the catch. Now that ball was going to be on about the uh, around the 10-yard line, I thought. They moved it out to the 16. I thought that it was uh, just a five-yard penalty. That's right. Well, now it's when Florida can really put pressure on you. Andrew Sound back at quarterback. Five wide receivers. Alabama trying to spread them out. Here they come. Sound quick Jackson incomplete. Andrew Sound pass intended for Quincy Jackson. So they try to hit the quick slant. Jackson couldn't hang on to it. And I thought Jackson really broke off his pattern that time. You've got to continue that pattern. Reggie McGrew comes out, the big lineman, number 92, comes to the sideline, and he's hobbling. I wonder if he has cramps. Alabama 
four wide receivers, and McClintock is in that slot. Jackson. Boy, and Andrew Zhao just throws that ball with velocity because the defensive coverage is right on him. Right of your screen, you're going to see how close the defender is. There's the turnout. Catch. Look at that. He's only within a yard. Then a nice play. Cut back inside. Quincy Jackson picks up the first down, moves the chains. That's what Florida has got, excuse me, Alabama has got to do. Thank you about that. He didn't try and run out of bounds. He tried to turn her up for more yards. Had 11 catches against BYU. Jackson also had a touchdown catch the stop for the Gators at that point. Dave Alabama's offense with Zal suddenly with a lot of confidence. They are. They certainly are. They're going to get Reggie McGrew back in there, and that'll help uh, Florida. For the Alabama, you can see there's the Alabama Brain Trust right there. They're in there thinking, boy, what are we doing? They, they need some plays. They need something to happen well. They need Zal to not force the ball into trouble. Don't throw it up. Just keep on playing like they're playing. They're still in this football game. right there boom down they go look at the block off the line that's Cuthbert 72 driving and all of a sudden you see Sean Alexander running with a little bit more authority Bob Mike DeVos says maybe he kept his team on the practice field a little bit too much last week so he cut down the practice time made it meeting time and Alabama looks much fresher today spinning his way to midfield Thaddeus Bullard has a hold of his ankles but Alexander Get it say good gain on first down. Alabama continues, Dave, to build momentum and build momentum. Well, their defense has been the thing that's given them momentum. And that's what Bob Stoops has defense has done for Florida. They're the ones that, that, that keep on getting those big plays and turnovers. But today, it's been Alabama's defense that has answered the call to give the spark. And then you talk about Andrew Zow coming up there and giving a little bit of spark to the offense. Marvin Richard, we questioned him just moment ago. He was just in the game and now left, so Richard appears to be all right. Sound. Looking for his man. It's incomplete. Bumping down there. Jason McAdley battling on the play with Tony George, the veteran. Like hey, the freshman ain't got oh, no. I'll tell you what, the, Tony George, what he does on that play. Look at this. He's just going to stay right in front of him, right there, just right in front of him. He just never lets him go on his pattern. Doesn't he doesn't interfere with him, he just stays, he just keeps that distance. That's a veteran play right there for yes, the senior is. out of Cincinnati. Boy, what a good football player. Oh, you just love him one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to worry about that corner. They were glad to get him back from that Tennessee game. Five of twelve on third down conversions. And Andrew Zhao got to go again here. Zhao looking. like the freshman there Bob and when he looked at Lott he told him go deep go deep he put his hand up told him just start going deep but look at Sal run around in his pocket he's just fearless back there now right in here look he's going to look at Lott and say hey go deep right there boom throws him the football look at his reaction oh right off the fingertips Alabama tradition kicking game kicking game Bear Bryant won with the kicking game and now Daniel Pope they run a big punt now he goes ahead and kicks it Interesting. And McGriff will make the catch oh. inside the 10 at the six yard line. Daniel Pope thought about it, let his teammates get downfield to cover it, then he booted it 43 yards, and Florida is backed up. Gators lead it by six, 11 54 to go on the fourth. 11 54 to go, eighth ranked Florida leading 16 10, but in a fight with Alabama here in Tuscaloosa. Center this time as Florida backed up. Shadow its own goal line inside the 10. Trying to wedge it out. Terry Jackson, 50 yards out across 
past the 10. Gary Jackson to the 12 yard line. And so Alabama now Kelvin keeps uh, Florida down to two on that first on carry. Let's go down series to David Logan. Yeah, Bob, you've been talking about the great tradition of the Florida kicking game, of the, excuse me, the Alabama <laughs> kicking game. This defense has really come out and really has good stuff to work with Florida being backed up. That's because of Pope. Strong leg kicker. Got his job as a walk on years ago. The guy can squat 575 and bench press 425. That's why he's had a lot of booming kicks because of the great strength. Sam pulls him on and let him run it up the middle on the fake. Terry Jackson cuts it up the middle. Good hard run. Dave, he's a terrific back. Oh, he is. He makes, he makes a hole where there is none. He sees the hole before it opens. That's what makes Terry Jackson so good. As he runs up there, he just almost feels the seam. Watch him. This play is designed to go here. All of a sudden, you see him back right there. He gets the block there by number 40, Frazier. Then he finds that little seam, just works it through there. And as you say, Bob, you just don't bring him down. You're not going to arm tackle him and bring him down. Steve Spurrier talked to him this week about tippy-toeing a little bit too much just to bust it up in there. He did on that play for a first down floor. He was in love to hang on to the football and come up with a long march here. Jackson rolled out of bounds across the 30, Terry right at the first the down game. marker. And Dave, this is where Florida, a lot of times with that offensive line, they've been pounded on you all day, and now if they can just get a long, sustained drive, your defense has got to step up. Exactly. Break to the outside, use a little bit of that speed, get to the outside. This looked like a face mask, but he actually got his shoulder pads. You see right the tail end here, he gets his shoulder pads. You see the way his head goes back, it almost looks like a, uh, a face mask. Second down. So Alabama's defense, they have played their hearts out today, but now they got to muster it up one more time to get the ball back for the offense. Gators trying to march it down and seal this thing. if he put his hand up on his chest or grabbed the shirt on the back on the corner of the shoulder that flag the official in great position to make that call and that's what it's going to go against Alabama seconds it was a second down in short so Spurrier rolls the dice and gets the call let's see if we see the hand on the shoulder right there we don't really see it there maybe the hand is grabbing the back of the official. on the defense the 15 yards Bryant's got his right arm hooked inside of the receiver's left arm. I don't think Mike DeBose liked that a whole lot. But that's a little bit careless play on Fernando Bryant. He's too good a player to have to put that hand up and just take, you know, a, a penalty that really was not going to be a big factor. That ball was not going to be caught. So the Gators continue this march. Remember, it started at the 4 to 10-yard line. <laughs> As Steve Stanley comes up along with Marcus Spencer. Spencer's the guy to lay the wood to him. Boy, Spencer came up there and flat out just, just leveled him. 41. Left of your screen. Watch this. Bang! Boy, did you hear that hit? That's what you like those defensive backs to do in linebackers. Walk on, who got a scholarship back in August. Marcus Spencer with a big hit. Stanley turned him in, and Spencer finished it. I think Grimes is the one that really opens it up. Number 98, he flushes the quarterback out. As he's going up, 98, you're going to see it right in there. He's going right up the gut there, and he forces the quarterback to step up. Now it's just trying to find a hole. Doug Johnson now comes in. Florida, two of four in third down conversions. And now the crowd roars. And the clock ticks down, Bob. Look, they're going to find another timeout. <laughs> they have to call timeout. They weren't even set. Florida's got one timeout remaining. Now, going this way, you've got the play clocks. You can see them as they're up on the scoreboard, and there's also one down low. But uh, Johnson saw it ticking down and decides to call the timeout. Third down and long. Florida, 8.44 to go in a tight fourth quarter. The winningest team all time in the SEC, Alabama, battling the team of the decade, the winningest team in the 90s, Florida. 16-10 Gators, third and long for Doug Johnson. And here comes the blitz, maybe, at the middle? No, they fake it. Johnson firing. He's got his man first down, and then some. Daryl Jackson 
comes free, and Johnson put it on the line. Well, Johnson's pass. Well, he did. And Tony Dixon ran right by the football. As the football was going that way, number 24, the strong safety, ran right on by it. You'll see him run right on by the football here. Look, watch this. Right on by. See 24 right there? Boom, he throws the ball right behind him. They're going to mark it right there. At the yeah, point. So take that 10-yard gain after the catch away because when he caught it, he was down. They marked it at the 40. Still first down. Jesse Palmer back in as the Gators marching from their own 10-yard line. Jackson on the counter. Picks up two. Play in the middle. Kelvin Jerry Sickler comes up along with Kenny Smith, and Smith has been all over the place today. And now do we run the quarterbacks in, or do we signal in? There we go, we signal in. But both, both quarterbacks, both Johnson and Palmer, keeping their hats on because they don't know which one's going to be out there. We talked to the Alabama staff yesterday, and they say they see no difference in yeah. the plays. I mean, they don't run certain plays for one quarterback. It's basically the same offense. Yeah. And now it's just a matter of getting some continuity down to 740 to go. Palmer. Going to grip. Up close to the 30, but they're running back to the 38 forward progress. Will be marked at the 30, which is going to be, looks like about six inches short of a first down. Good strike that time. Again, going back to those basic patterns. Little curl pattern to the left of your screen. You're going to see McGriff just come in there, just get a little bit of separation. Bang, he throws the rope to him. When he turns around, there's the ball. That's just perfect timing. When you can time like that, you know your wide outs and your quarterback are working together. Seven minutes. Big Al trying to score his defense on. Quarterback sneak. They just needed six inches there. Ride that big offensive line. And Doug Johnson pushes it. The key thing here keeps the clock running. Alabama has two timeouts remaining. But Dave, I got to think that Florida's thinking touchdown. Well, they have to be thinking touchdown because that puts the game uh, more than one score. Right now, Florida's leading by six points. Any score by Alabama, any touchdown by Alabama, and they're going to be behind. So they've got to be thinking touchdown. Control the clock. Palmer's numbers today. Field goal puts them up by nine, so that's two scores. But Florida thinks about kicking field goal. They don't want to get very much. He's out of bounds at the three. Robert Gillespie comes unchecked out of the Florida backfield, and he makes the catch down at the three-yard line. Dave, it's amazing how Spurrier can get those matchups, and that time nobody picked up Gillespie. That's because Trevor Smith, 48, blitzes on the play. You see 48 in the quarterback's hands. He never saw Gillespie coming out of the backfield. There he is down the sideline. That's number 48's man. What an effort to try to get that football into the touchdown. But again, Travis Smith blah, rushes on the play. That's his coverage. Great effort there. Well, that's be seven catches coming into the game. A couple today, and that was a big one. As again, the Gators have first and goal now. Jackson cuts it out. Powers down to the two, and he shoved back. Travis Carroll down there, along with Kenny Smith and Travis Smith. Yeah, Mike DeVos' team has turned them away time after time today, but the Gators now are gaining control of this one. Well, and you're, if you're Steve Spurrier and his staff, you're thinking, don't turn the football over. Don't have one of those crazy plays like they've had in the past. Just protect the football, drive it in there, control the clock, go up by more than one score. Six minutes and counting. Alabama runs a player in late. Jackson straight up the middle. Fumble, Hoss loose again. They mark it down right at the goal line. Who's got it? Guess what? Alabama. Cornelius Griffin comes up with a loose ball. Terry Jackson fumbled at the run against Tennessee. It cost him perhaps the momentum of that game early. And now he fumbles here at the one-yard line, and Alabama's got it back. Watch the ball just get ripped out right there. The hand just comes out. The ball is out early. Look at the effort by Alabama. Cornelius Griffin, number 97, comes up with it. They're going to get it out on the 20, Bob. It was in the end zone. He couldn't have been more than a, a foot from scoring when he, was, when he got hit. He fumbled into the end zone against Tennessee. He fumbles into the end zone against Alabama. Remember, Doug Johnson also fumbled back in the third quarter inside the two-yard line. So Alabama gets it back, needing a touchdown to take the lead. Alexander. And the middle. Running hard and gets stopped after a good 
pickup on first down by Ed Chester. Two timeouts for Alabama, plenty of time left. And Andrew Zhao, what a story he's been. He came on for John David Phillips, but Alabama was lethargic, could get, not, get nothing done offensively, and Zhao, the freshman, has been a spark now. Can he pull off what would be a stunning upset? Well, he's, he was at 49 yards before this drive started, so he's up over 50. And now the key, third down and short, Dave. Yeah, and you start thinking as you watch the clock run down under five minutes, you thought of, you think about how many more times will Alabama get the football. This may be their time. They may have to keep it on fourth down. I knew a quarterback can't put his hands on the center and then pull out like that. That's exactly what he did. There's a flag on the It's a legal procedure. Yeah, you can't put your hands in and fake to draw the defense off side. Ball. Illegal procedure against the offense. Five yards, still third down. Young mistakes. Yeah. Boy, Young that's a big mistakes. one, Bobs. It was third down and about one to two. Now it's third down and six. Boy, does that change the complexion of the play. Now it's got to be a pass. Maybe he might use that rollout that he has been a little bit successful with. Get out of that pocket and scramble. Runs Alabama 5 of 14 on third down. Zhao looking, looking, firing. He's out there for Jackson, who has to go the way. By Manuel, no flag. Manuel, the linebacker, staying with Quincy Jackson, and knocks the ball away, and Alabama has to punt it. Well, they really like uh, Marquan Manuel, number four, the freshman. Just great coverage right there, keeps the hand inside. See that uh, Jackson looks back for the flag. There is none. Alabama has to, has to figure that Alabama. they can get the ball one more time, Bob. And they may get it in good field position. They need Pope to boom one again. He's had a huge day for him. He's got the wind at his back. Back at his 27-yard line. That's where the Gators will take things over. They would like to put together a couple of first downs and get out of here with a victory. 49 yards on the punt. Florida's got it up by six when they come back. Sellout crowd today here in Tuscaloosa. Nobody has left as Florida and Alabama battle. See the Gators scoring only 10 points all year in the fourth quarter. They can do it. Use a touchdown here to salt this thing away. 4-0-4 remaining, and the Gators have got it back. And on second and throw. Terry Jackson, they give the ball right back to him after Terry the fumble, Jackson, and Jackson the powers out for a couple. Boy, that's a big block by Rod Fraser, number 40, the fullback. He's the one that they break off. He leads in the hole. Jackson Five sees that block just cuts right off of him. Six, Alabama, when do you use the timeouts? You've got two left. Well, if they stop them here and they bring up a third down, they may use one, but you've got to conserve those timeouts. Florida, run the clock. Jackson breaks it up the middle. And Jackson has a first down. And O'Brien comes over along with Spencer to make the play. Big first down for Florida. Keeps the, move, the chains moving. Made the tackle for Alabama. Same play right again. You're going to see McClintock come up in here and block. Jackson take the ball, read that block, and off he goes. Boom, right there. See McClintock 40 right there? He's, he's just popping in there, hitting Trevor Smith 48, turning him out. Jackson making the break on it. They ran that back-to-back. -back. Bob picked up a lot of yards. Jackson over 100 yards on the day for the fourth time this year. And off again to Jackson. Floor 
Monroe is 16 Terry points Jackson today. The, the last time they scored this few points was 14 men. against Tennessee back in 1992. Hey, Bob, I want to clear up one thing. That's uh, Rod Frazier, number 40. His mom and dad will be writing me letters. But number 40, that lead blocker is Rod Frazier. He's the he's the sophomore in there, 5'11", about 230. He's the one that's just piling up in there and allowing Terry Jackson to make that, that break. You can see he's tired. He's in that huddle. That's, I guess that's kind of being in the huddle. But these guys have played a heck of a football game today. Hot muggy day. These teams have just slugged it out. Jackson cuts it outside. Got some room to run. He's into Alabama territory and rolls it down inside the 35-yard line. Jackson, this year, 116 yards against Kentucky, 117 against Northeast Louisiana, and 127 against the Citadel, over 100 yards today, and time is running out now for Alabama. Well, they get the outside wedge, they catch the back, or Travis Carroll inside, and then Jackson just gets to the outside. But I'll tell you what I was watching, those big linemen, once that play was over, those big linemen, they walked all the way to the line of scrimmage. They didn't run, they didn't jog, they just walked. Those big puppies are starting to do some deep inhale, and you can see them when they break the huddle. They're walking up to the line of scrimmage. They're tired. They played hard. Two minutes to go. The clock runs. Alabama hasn't burned the two timeouts yet. Jackson. Now you burn one stands for a couple. When do you take it? Right now. And that's what Alabama's going to do. Yeah, you got to conserve some time. Dave, I guess we talked about Mike DeBose and the job he did getting this team ready to play football. He said he was disappointed with their effort last week. He can't be disappointed with it today. No, you know, you play football game with talent and ability. And uh, that's the difference in football games. But there's one intangible, and that's heart. And he asked his players to play hard, and they have played hard today. Now it's time to look at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the game, brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To start the second half, Alabama needed to get something going. They were down 13-3, to and they get the touchdown from the big fullback, Dustin McClintock. First touchdown for anybody rushing other than Sean Alexander this year. And the drive, five plays, 65 yards, and 235 on the time and McClintock with the touchdown run and that has made this thing a very tight football game that made it at that time 13 to 10 Florida later kicked a field goal but still it's a one score game and if you're over on Florida's side of the ball you're saying right now don't fumble the football just keep that football keep it tucked in be aware of it be conscious of it and you know what's interesting as a coach you don't go up and say to a player be aware of the football. You just tell them subtly, tuck it away, keep that ball. They, they did it all week in practice. As you said, they had a, all their wide receivers and their running backs carrying footballs just to be conscious of it. But it's still frustrating because, let's face it, Florida could have scored four more touchdowns in this game if they would have taken care of the football. Absolutely. Second down. Now they're going to call their last time out. They've got too many players on the field. I wondered if Frazier's hurt because he started over to the sideline. Well, they've got 11 out there. I just counted. Well, I, I just so. looked at Frazier come to the sideline, and he's kind of limping. Number 40 is limping. I'm wondering if he's come up with some kind of report. Report. Florida now is out of timeouts with 141 to go. 16 to 10, Florida. Now they'll talk about it. You're right that uh, also Frazier is limping. The third quarter, Andrews out sparking Alabama. One of the big plays, the completion. As they flip the ball out to Tim Bowens, he fumbles the football, but watch the hustle by Jason McGadley. Saves the turnover. Alabama able to score on that as they get the touchdown from the fullback, Dustin McClintock. They made it 13-10. to 10. That, kept the, that kept the drive alive. Then Florida comes right on back. Good defense right here. Can play on the outside, hold Florida to a field goal drive possible, except... And that was Gillespie, and then the field goal made it a six-point game, 16-10. Then, of course, this is, of course, the big play of the third quarter. This is where Johnson fumbled the football, and Alabama stopped him inside the five-yard line, recovered it, and drove the, drove the football to get it out of trouble. But credit to Florida defense, kept Alabama out of the end zone on that play. And now, the big tailback, Eugene McCaslin, Stumbles and falls as he gets to the 30, and Alabama's going to use the last timeout. 
Well, Dave, now you've got two plays. If you're Alabama, you've got to stop them. If you don't stop them here, you're not going to get the time out. No, exactly right. They've got to stop them. I'd bring Terry Jackson back in there. I mean, he's the, he's the running back of the day. I'd see a Frazier. He may not be well enough to go. I saw him come to the sideline limping. So 94 seconds remaining. You see the top 25. Ohio State was winning against Penn State. Nebraska and then Tennessee getting set to kick it off against Auburn. UCLA, Kansas State, LSU is sixth. Florida number eight. Georgia 12. Arkansas number 22. And LSU, of course, and Georgia play tonight in Baton Rouge. Also another intriguing matchup today in the SEC. Arkansas and Kentucky. What a terrific day today in the SEC football. Boy, it is. And I'll tell you, the Arkansas team, I remember Danny Ford last year told us that we could just make it one more year. Of course, he did not. But uh, Arkansas has a good football team. Sure do. Well, here we go. Third down and four. Well, if it's me, I'm going to go back to Terry Jackson. Third down and five. That's a little bit stretched for Terry Jackson. But one thing, if you go to him, you keep the clock going. Jackson. And did he get a first? No, he's short. The clock is going to roll, though. Now, if you're Doug Johnson, what you do is you look up at the clock, get your play from the from the sideline, from Steve Spurrier, then step up there and let every second that you can. They have not set the 25-second clock, so they just let it roll down. Now they've set it. Now, just take your time. Big number 40, Frazier comes back in there. Rod Frazier, that lead back. They need about a yard. Well, Alabama's history is built on a lot of fourth down stops. Will this be one that we'll remember for years and years? Fourth down, Alabama. The game riding on this play. Everybody get in tight, get penetration, and stop letting up front. Jackson puts his hat down. I don't know. No way. I didn't think he made it. No, he had to make the 25. Bobby didn't make it. Cornelius Griffin got there. They're going to measure this one. They can measure all they want, but I think Alabama's going to have a reason to cheer. They're going to get the football back, but only 45 seconds on the clock. Travis Carroll said they didn't make it, and now the officials say they didn't make it. And a standing ovation by the Alabama fans and the head coach, Mike DuBose. Well, Bob, if I'm Bob Stoops, it's my team out there, the defensive unit, and that's what Florida has the strength in. You talked about their great defensive unit. I'd want that defensive unit on the football field because they are outstanding. They're not going to be easy. They've started the play clock, and Alabama's offense isn't on the field yet. 15 seconds now. Jan, the freshman, lead Alabama down the field. 64 yards for a touchdown to win it. Zow. goes down. Now we'll see what the flag is. Alabama out of timeout. So are the Gators. Bob, it was thrown while the ball while the ball was in play. So it wasn't somebody lining up in the neutral zone. I wondered if it's holding on one of the Florida players because it was thrown while the ball was in play. The illegal procedure. The offensive team didn't have enough people on the line of scrimmage. Oh, that's why it was. They were thinking, yeah, they're thinking of a late slid, a late shift here. You can see they say they don't have enough linemen on the line of scrimmage, but it takes a lot of time off the play. This took 12 seconds, and it cost them five yards. Yeah, plus they Florida got the best of that play. I don't know what Florida's signal. All their guys are all signal pointing over there. Again, no timeouts. Well, I, I, if I'm Florida... Well, they're trying to figure out what do you, you want to take the penalty or take the down is what yeah. they were asking. And I think they're going to... You would think they would take the play if they've got the option. But it's... But it would make it's it. not a dead ball foul, though, is it? Yeah. It, it no, it was be. not a dead ball foul. 33 seconds on the clock. You've got to go long. You've got to get somebody in the seam. And just think about that secondary. you got Tony George, Braddy, Tico Brown, Pollard back there. They're the ones there, the great defensive secondary. And then you've got those big hosses up front led by those linebackers, and they can flat out come. You know they're going to get all their weight on their hands. They're going to come after them today. Spurrier wanted to decline the penalty. He wants the down. Five yards doesn't mean that much right now. You want to get them out of downs. Second, uh, first down, so they'll replay it. They roll the clock. 
Now you got to pick up first downs because that stops the clock. And the outside is short down the hall. That's not going to get it. You've got to go long. You've got to get that ball down 15, 18, 20 yards at least. Move the chains, and that allows the clock to stop until you snap the football. 28 seconds. Bob Stoops. And Steve Spurrier trying to pull one out in Tuscaloosa. These teams have had some memorable games down through the years. Four times in the SEC championship game. Tuscaloosa in the regular season in Alabama. Trying to pull off the upset. They got a long way to go. Now, Franks has got a man open. Calvin Hall makes the catch from the 32 yard line. Now, the guy gets to the line of scrimmage. The clock stops while they move the chains. Calvin Hall makes the play behind the Alabama for the secondary. And now, with 19 seconds to go, Alabama's going to have a couple of shots to the end zone. Bob, he fell down on his own. He was wild. Cal's going to spike it to stop the clock. They set the change. They wind the clock as soon as they're set. 19 seconds to go. Now you got to get up on the line of scrimmage. Just as soon as they snap it, he's going to throw it. And it's intercepted. It's intercepted by Tony George. Instead of spiking the ball, Sal tried to throw it out of bounds. And it was intercepted by Tony George. Well, George, I thought it was the old pump and go where he tried to fake it to him and then went long. by Tony George. Watch this. Right up to the top of your screen right there. Bang. He's going to just sit right there. Right there. He throws it. He threw it more to Tony George than he did anyone else. That's not the play that you needed. They needed to go long. They had to pick up first down yardage. Well, they wanted him to spike it. Yeah. Mike DeVos said spike the ball. Stop it. We'll reset it. But Tony George, like he's done so many times for this Florida team, bails him out here with the interception. And now all they've got to do is kneel on it one time, and this one will be over. Well, Bob Stoops, he calls them big plays. And that's when you do one of those huge big plays. Fumble recovers, interception for Tony George. That's a big play. Nail down, Jesse Power. An eighth-ranked Florida survives. As Steve Spurrier and the Gators win today here in Tuscaloosa. As the Gators move to 4-1 and one on the season, 2-1 in the SEC. Alabama gave them a fight, but the Gators prevail as they win it 16 to 10. On your way home, please listen to the post-game show brought to you by Hardy on WCBQ. Andrew Zhao, the young quarterback, makes the mistake at the end of the game. But what a valiant effort it was today by Alabama. Let's go downstairs to David Logan. All right, Coach, uh, you squeak one out. Uh, I've never had a game like this. Uh, never had a game like this. So many blown opportunities. But we won the game, so we're not completely disappointed. But... I don't know how we won it. We, we probably deserved to lose the game, but somehow or another we held on. But at the same time, Coach, your offense gets so much credit, but your defense has really been pulling you out of this offense one. went up and down the field. I bet we had over 450 yards. I don't know what we had, but we, we couldn't score touchdowns. So never had one like this, but we won it, so that's a good sign. All right, Coach, thank you. Play tough. Give them credit. They better than us down inside the 10-yard line. I think Coach Spurrier's right. I Alabama, think, you got to tip your hat to them. They yes, really did. fought hard today, but Alabama just didn't have it, uh, couldn't make the plays when they had to. Well, that last series was a crucial one. You wonder if they'd had a little bit more time. But Zhao came in and certainly gave them a spark, Bob. He gave them something that they haven't had in the last couple weeks. And uh, I think he's probably somebody that you're going to that you're going to build around. But on this play, Bob, I thought it was a fake pump. See, right here when he kind of puts the ball, looks like he's going to fake. But then all of a sudden he throws the ball and it's right to Tony George, right in his hands. George with that outstanding coverage, he probably had help deep, so he was able to stay up close on the receiver. But that was the time to go to the end zone. Steve Spurrier, 6-1 and one now as the head coach in this series. But I'll tell you what, he knows he was in a ball game today. Boy, he was. And Florida wins it today over Alabama, 16-10. to 10. And so Florida takes it and survives this test here in Tuscaloosa. And so now Alabama... When you look at them, now they've got to muster it up. They take on Ole Miss next week. They, you know, they 
exerted a lot of energy today to win this thing or to, uh, to play today against this Florida team. Let's go downstairs now to David Logan. You got a big smile on your face because you know you're getting out of here by the skin of your teeth. Yeah, um, it was a tough one. Alabama's a pretty good team, and as you can see, um, they didn't give up none. So we just had to, um, we just had to keep getting at them all four quarters of the game. And like towards the end, we had to play a lot because the offense wanted to keep us on the field a lot. What about your game? Did you find this team moving away from you, rolling away from you? You didn't seem to be in a lot of the action this afternoon. Yeah, um, I found them getting away from me, but at times, you know, as um, long as everybody played that gap, everyone plays um, assignment football. You know, I have a chance to get over on some of the tackles that, that not on my side. You know, a lot of people talk about this uh, this Gator offense, but you guys defensively, you got to be right up there at the tops in the nation. That's got to make you feel good as well. Yeah, um, we made a commitment to ourselves to come in and stop the offensive game and make them pass, but it, it came out with a pretty good passing attack, especially towards the end of the game. But um, we, um, we was dedicated the whole game stopping the run and try to stop their um, their pass, but you know, um, one of these days we're going to click together. The offense is going to be able to keep up with the defense.